and we're back. Yay. Yay. I'm grinning because I like the intro so much. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice. Up. As Ozcor so in the chat saying, who made this? It's so sexy and professional. You're right, Oz, it's both. <laughs> it, was, it was made by a very sexy and professional person. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh no, they're still referencing Booty Horn. I still have to get around to making that song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't need to derail immortal. this with the booty horn discussion, though. Um, you might not need a whole <laughs> song. I mean, it's just a good word to rhyme with, say, unicorn. Oh! Mm. oh my, uh, where's my pin? Uh, <laughs> try to come up with lyrics great. ideas. I'm not even going to charge you my normal consultation fee. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there needs to be a real punk episode of just the two of you composing songs together. <laughs> I mean, that God sounds fun. Please. I would play that game. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I know you would. You have played that game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm admittedly pretty good at that game. Mm. Especially if it's completely on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> Either good or just terrible and sometimes it's better and sometimes it's both yeah yeah <laughs> like oz <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, would you like to take us in cass sure um i'll try and do a brief recap just because it has been two episodes since the present time um, so I'm just going to read this briefly so I actually stay on track. Um, so the team decided to improve their relationship with the town gossip by doing her a favor. Her friend Captain Mithri was supposed to meet her but never showed up. The team found out Mithri was last seen with long-term town resident Noel. After some eavesdropping, giving an autonomous spider drone to some wild mutants for dinner, intense interrogation, and accidental triggering of a corporate brainwashing mechanism, they learn that Mithri was taken hostage by the Synthiri Tech Corporation. Armed with an advanced AI mutated by the wild to barter or blackmail Synthiri's dangerous experiments and kidnapping's tendencies, Scout and Jacob walked up to Synthiri's front gate to begin negotiations for Mithri's safe return. So, I think where we come in um, from the camera, we're kind of coming out of the flashback of the last episode. So we see just like the, the text on the bottom of the screen that says present day. Um, and we can see it's nighttime um, and we kind of pan down. We see what looks like sort of a, a brick building um, with an iron rock gate and some flowers just perfectly spaced out all the same color in front of it. Um, and we see Scout and Jacob walking up to this gate, and it slides into the walls instead of swinging open. And a woman in a very, like, stereotypical kind of generic corporate uh, business suit walks out. And she smiles at the two of you and says, Welcome to some theory tech. How might I help you this evening? Uh, uh, we are... Uh... <clears throat> representatives uh, of the a nearby town and uh, we would like to speak to somebody who is in charge of letting prisoners go. Oh, I see. You're here for our negotiations expert. Is that correct? Scout? Scout's just sort of, he's been pursing his lips and, and uh, tightening his hands into fists and just looking like he's pent up ready to do something he doesn't know what uh we're uh yes yes we would uh, I, I don't know negotiations expert yes oh excellent one moment um and she sort of holds up her wrist and you see like a, a very fancy looking like smartwatch on it and she sort of pushes little buttons on it and she says okay i just have a few brief questions to make sure we get you the help that you need um, now, are these negotiations classified as hostile, friendly, or undetermined? Uh, undetermined? Okay, undetermined. Thank you. Now, are these negotiations involving money, land, or information? Kidnapped people? 
Information. Information. Excellent. So you are here to see a negotiation information expert of adaptable negotiation style. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Well, um, before we can have you come onto the grounds, we'll just need you to sign some non-disclosure agreements. This is just because everything beyond this gate is proprietary information. Information, and we need to make sure that our investors are protected. Uh, and she sort of reaches into her coat and pulls out some paper. And you can see it's like triplicate form. So she unfolds it with like the pink copy and the yellow copy. And she pulls a pen out of her pocket. Um, and I think because you referred to Scout, uh, Scout, she holds it out to you. And you can see it's this like dense size six legalese contract just going all the way down. Well, you found my one weakness, paper. <laughs> uh, listen, we don't, I don't think you really want this documented. We're, we're here for, oh crap, what was her name? Uh, Captain Mithri. Mithri? Or mm -hmm. Corporal Myth. We're here for Mithri. Uh, this isn't an official corporate service or a, normal tour we're we know you've got a person that you've been holding against their will and we want them out and we want to tell you that we don't appreciate you doing that sort of thing in this town yeah and i'm not going to oh, sign I your see. stupid non-disclosure arrangements so right here at the bottom where it says initial yes please put your legal initials there and then your thumbprint Do I need ink or anything? Oh, no. It will accept your DNA automatically. I wouldn't That's... touch that. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put my thumbprint on it. Uh, you feel like the paper get warm for a second uh, and then just goes back to feeling like paper. Scout folds his arms, pointedly concealing his hands from... <laughs> being, you know, visible. <laughs> there you go. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad you agreed. Contracts, after all, are the best way to maintain a civilized nation. Now, here is your copy. And she pulls, like, the pink one from the bottom and holds it out to you. Uh, this cannot be used for DNA collection, as we have kept that in our original copy. We will also send a copy to corporate back in the metropolis. If you have any concerns about this, you can contact customer service. Thank you. Um, then she she looks at you, Scout, and says, Now, are you signing a uh, non-disclosure agreement, or are you here for backdoor negotiations? I don't like any of your options. I just want the person out and to send a message that you're bad people. I'm not touching your weird contract thing. Or your oh. back door. I see the misunderstanding. You've initiated the bad cop, good cop protocol. I'm not the negotiator. I'm not the one you want to be speaking with about this. Uh, and she pulls out another non-disclosure agreement and hands it to you, Scout, or tries to. <laughs> I'm just doing that. I'm not touching that thing uh, with my he, flesh. He is He's my aide. I'm going to oh. try. I'm, I actually, I, I give like Jacob I, this sort of wild look. And I guess I'm going to try to like communicate to him that I'm just ready to go bolt into this place. And I'm trying right. to get I, a I, read I, off I, of I, him. I'd be like, hey, I got this, man. Uh, he, he doesn't technically need to decide if he's my aide, right? Oh, are you saying he's a, a corporate asset belonging to your holding? Correct. I see. Then you would like to uh, declare your asset form. And she reaches into like her pocket and pulls out a different triplicate form. Mm-hmm. There you As go. Now, if you can just hold your eye up to this part, and she like holds up where the signature block is. Uh, retinal scan ain't going to work on me. 
I don't understand. I, I show her my eye. No retina. <laughs> oh. Well, I will just put you down as a wild mutant lacking retina. And if you can just sign here uh, and you see her like write something on the form and then hold it back out to you. What's it say? It says you're a wild mutant and able to be scanned with a human retinal scanner and that we should still deal with you because we appreciate diversity in our corporation. Oh, there we go then. I go ahead and sign that too. Very good. Now, if you and your asset will please come this way. Um, and she just like does a very neat like turn on her heel um, and starts walking up uh, a paved sort of pathway into the estate. I am very tempted to uh, do the Mel Brooks walk this way right behind her. You know, where I'm doing the exact same, but I'm not going to do that. I'm keep, keeping that all inside. I kind of give Scout a look like, okay, are we, are we going? I don't like this, he says as like he's going. <laughs> but they only have one of our thumbprints, so, I mean, I guess they can only put a voodoo curse on me. That's bad. It's not a voodoo curse. It's just they have information. They can use it to track you or make copies of you or something. Now, that might not be such a bad thing. Yeah, except they'd be enslaved by whoever made them. Still be getting twice as much work done. How loudly are you two talking? About as, oh. I guess, yep. stage was Probably whispers. a little bit under our breath, you know, but <laughs> I'm... <laughs> Nothing anybody with really good hearing couldn't pick up, I'm sure. Um, I think without facing you, she's walking. She says, oh, no, it's in theory tech. We don't believe in enslavement. We believe that everyone should be paid for their labor and service. You can ask us about our bonds when your negotiation has finished. Thank you. <laughs> be careful. Yeah. They're tying strings to you already. I did not notice. For I am just a simple country mutant. <laughs> okay, um, Scout, because you're kind of on edge and I imagine sort of looking around a little bit, you uh, notice that one of the little black cameras that was attached to the, the wall has hopped off to the ground and has like little tiny tripod legs and it's sort of running after you with its little red light pointed in your direction. Mm hmm. Um, so as you're coming in, in the inside the walls, you see there's a paved path leading up to a very, like, shadowy warehouse-looking, um, building. And the landscape on either side of you is just gravel. Like, plain, kind of gray gravel, and, uh, as far as you can see, kind of into the darkness. Um. Oh, this, this is lovely. Thank you. We did some research and we found that human imagination was better than putting design in place. So please just imagine whatever pleasant settings make you happiest. Probably increases productivity or something, doesn't it? It does by 3.7% and it only decreases employee satisfaction by 7.5%, which is well within allowable range. Yes, yes. What, what exactly is the unhappiness range like where do you top out misery well we have found that if we get above 72 percent people start speaking about and she sort of lowers her voice unions so we try to make sure that we never go beyond 70 percent and that might even be a little high i mean if you're just doing the math and jump up and down Yes. Um, so as you kind of follow up the path, uh, you don't see anyone else. It's just kind of her uh, and you two and the little camera running after you. 
and um, there's sort of like a flick and large uh, ground floodlights turn on and you see uh, it looks like probably a four story just very boxy uh, sort of warehouse shaped building and it has uh, sort of a plain just door almost like a house door with a white picket fence and a square around it and a little little sign that says welcome to your home away from home Um, and she sort of stops by the fence and says would you like to take pictures with the commemorative fence oh no I'm just going to imagine it it'll make me more productive excellent you know if you're ever looking for a new career I think you'd fit in well here thank you I appreciate your outward inclusivity Absolutely. Um, she sort of pushes a button and the fence swings open with a little bit of like a whirring sound. And she goes up to the door and puts her hand on the doorknob for a second. You see something like a little bit like a flash. And then she op- opens it and steps in and says, Now, if you would please just go down the hall to your left and up the first flight of stairs, you'll find yourself in uh, the indeterminate negotiation wing. That doesn't sound ominous at all. I think we will do that. Aid? Excellent. Don't look at me. I'm just an asset. Do they stay (laughs) there and watch us go down the hall after them? Uh, Yeah, if you go down the hall to the left, she'll uh, stay by the door and the little camera still sort of runs after Uh, you. I stop about halfway and look back over my shoulder. (laughs) And then turn back and head back towards the stairs. <laughs> when you yeah. look over, she just smiles in a very fixed way. Oh, Scout, I think we might get murdered. What? I, I thought you said this. I was following your lead. I meant attempted murder. We'll be fine. I brought band aids. And well, I brought teeth. something that's going to make somebody else wish they had some band aids. Kind of like refers to uh, uh, like re- reaches down over his uh, uh, jacket. It's a bit of a, a lump there. Now, 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 now everybody's going to know where it is if we're on camera. Uh, no, the camera's behind us. Oh. It's so it chirps cute. when you say camera. Oh. It does a little chirpy sound at you. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> Again. Later. It's a good one. Good joke. Funny. Get to the stairs, I guess, and uh, yeah. head on up. Uh, as you're walking, like the interior reminds you of a very bland hotel, like kind of the like beige walls and like maybe kind of bluish green rug that's sort of geometric vaguely. This is maybe the fanciest room I have ever been in. And uh, when you step on the stairs, you hear a click, and then it starts going up like an escalator. Oh, Um, oh, what the? Well, look at that. Oh, that's actually (laughs) really kind of nice. I feel like I'm at a shopping mall. Look at me in my big city. Hey, look, I bought very expensive coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Let me tell you all about my mortgage. Those are all the jokes I know. Uh, the stairs Scout, stop. Scout's watching oh. to see uh, how the uh, the camera drone is, is handling the stairs. Mm. It's on the stair just right next to you. It's a little red light pointing up at you. It's a little close there, buddy. Personal space. I'm really glad I didn't wear my dress today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the stairs come to a stop, and uh, you can see in the wall next to you uh, another like floodlight comes up, and it's a door, and it says negotiations colon uh, indeterminate. I'm gonna take out my little comm unit, sort of surreptitiously, maybe shouldering it a little ways away from the, the the camera drone, trying to not give it a view of what I'm doing, and I'm gonna uh, calm Luna. Shh, Luna, come in. You there? Are you getting us? Yeah, I'm here. I can hear you. Uh, oh, good. What's going on? Uh, 
We've Add. decided to enter the hornet's nest before kicking. Yeah, we're about to go in this uh, negotiation in determinate room. I think they're about to try to kill us. So, I don't know. I thought I might call somebody and tell them. Uh, hmm. Not good at the plan. Well, part of it. Uh, okay. Uh, just uh, I, be ready. I don't understand what you want me to do about it. Well, you've got the truck out there, right? If you if it comes yeah. down to it, I don't know, come driving in and see if you can help or run away and save yourself. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Hey, look, if I can't get us out of here, you definitely run off and save yourself. Okay, that, that's a better plan. Yeah, and uh, tell okay. everybody all about what they're doing here. All right. Uh, as best you can, because uh, you didn't sign the non-disclosure agreement. My God. Man. Yeah. It was the only way we were getting in the door without a fight. I didn't feel like, well, I didn't feel like hitting that, whatever that thing was. Mm hmm. Well, uh, oh man, I don't know. Good luck. Like, is that what you say in a situation like this? I don't know. Yeah, no, we'll take all the luck we can get. Yeah, uh, you, you, you too. I'm actually kind of glad to hear you're superstitious. I mean, a little bit. Yeah. Um. Any yeah, advice? Don't uh. Don't say anything stupid. How am I going to be able to tell? <laughs> Never mind. I don't know. Thank That's you. the best advice I can give you right now. <laughs> I feel like I might have to just tape shut my mouth now. Right? Yeah, th that's why we need you here. No, I'm, I'm glad you're not here. Oh, I guess we should go. They'll probably can trace this, or maybe Karen can hide what it from them. What is that supposed to mean? What? That you're glad I'm not there. I don't, I don't know. Because if so things you don't go get wrong, killed, you can but... still get the job done. Well, or have yeah. a life. Yeah. If I had your job, I'd be right useless with it. I don't know how to work the computer, let alone get information out to people without, without taking it to them directly. <laughs> uh, well, that's why I have my job and not you. But yeah, uh, good luck in there. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, bye. <laughs> Hang up. <laughs> so, Scout, is that is that lump? Is that a gun? Uh, maybe. Okay, no, that's okay. I'll take a maybe. That sounds perfect. That sounds better than a no any day of the week. Uh, yeah, I'm, Scout is being cagey, and I also haven't checked the boxes on my equipment yet, so I'm, I'd prefer to wait until the situation to see whether I'd be better off using a gun or having to... Uh, you have some body armor, and then also uh, maybe uh, resort to a melee weapon instead. So we'll we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I brought was body armor and a melee <laughs> weapon, and then a couple of incidentals, which we may get to or not, yes. depending <laughs> on how things go. Yes, I, I will leave it in a quantum state for now. Is yeah, Scout is hmm. maybe yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm ready in case things go wrong. I think. I'm yeah. I'm here in case things go wrong. That's my. Uh, whole job is to get us out of here if things go wrong. Okay. Let's just be cool. I, I literally freeze things. That's, yeah, I was making it, you know, I don't know if it's a that pun a, or a double entendre I'm, or... <laughs> whatever it was, it was quite good and I did not mean to offend. No, not at all. It's just... I, I find your personality to be delightful. You as don't well. always know how to show that. Yes, well. But you, you got me a little on edge. I, I, this place has me a little on edge. I, I think um, <clears throat> I think that's probably a good thing, though. Uh, this is the there's kind of place just, we want to be on edge. There's just so much gray. Uh, we're not going to get this uh, 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 Corporal Colonel Mitchell back. Uh, oh, Captain. That's not it. Captain. Mithry. Captain Mithri, yes. We're not going to get Captain Mithri back filling out their paperwork and, and following their rules. Okay, we're going to have to go off off camera at some point. But uh, I don't know when the best time for that is. I'm going to follow your lead? Or I say we play by their rules until the rules don't make any sense. Hopefully we get what we want. If we don't, we take it. 
the rules have made sense to you? No, no. It just everything operates by a particular set of rules, whether that be animal, corporation, or man. You play by the rules, you're less likely to get bit by any one of them. Okay. Uh, Until it becomes too inconvenient to your own rules. Then you break them and start hitting people. Okay. I already feel like I'm at the part where... where uh, you know, the rules involve kidnapping people and... I'm already at the sort of hitting part. So I'm going to follow your lead. I'm holding back from this because uh, I'm afraid... We are going for the most, un the most non-violent unkidnapping we can get away with. All right. I mean, some of these people come to the town. They're practically neighbors. Practically. Right. Okay. I don't go off just whacking neighbors upside the head unless they've done something wrong. I don't know if all of them done something wrong. I mean, are most of the people working at these kinds of places just regular people who sold their soul? Or maybe just try to get by and didn't have... I don't know. I don't know why someone would stay here, but but no. I'm not going to kill anybody. Jesus Christ. If it comes to violence, I've got other solutions. Nothing so crass. I mean, killing may be crass, but... It does tend to have the final word in most matters. Yeah, and also makes people really upset with you. Right. But what are you worried about? You're just my aide. <sighs> I mean, they'll come to my house, right? We came to theirs. <laughs> right. We're calling that mistake number two. <laughs> I thought that was part of the plan. Ah, the plan was mistake number one. Okay, are we going to go in this door, or are we going to, like, find a different door? No, we're going in. All right. Darn. <sighs> Who opens open the, door. the door? All right. Uh, so you see Jacob open the door, and we're actually going to, we're going to cut away to Luna. Um, and Luna, you're, you're sitting in Jacob's truck, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you hear a little, like, tap, tap, tap on the windshield and we see it's one of the the cameras from the wall has detached and run over and jumped up on the the car so you see this little like black camera on little uh legs sort of looking in the window um and a red light turns on and then it forms into words and mm -hmm. it says loitering y slash n question mark uh i shake my head no uh, it says lost, Y slash N, question mark. No. Uh, it says um, lovers, Y slash no, question mark. What? Uh, no. Uh, it says miscellaneous, Y slash no, question mark. I guess. Yes. Uh, the little camera makes a little nod um, and then taps again on the windshield and says uh, contacting supervisor Y slash no or Y slash in. Uh, <laughs> um. Okay, so I don't know what it means, um, and I don't want to take any risks, so uh, I'm going to use my cool new ability that I got, yeah. uh, Synth Speaker. I am going to... I would like to speak with this machine. Ooh. Alrighty. Um, so I guess so... I roll for that? Yeah, oh, what... Fuck. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I rolled and I got a fucking one. Wow. Why does this keep happening to me? What did you want to say to it? Uh. <laughs> um. 
I wanted to ask it what it meant, and I also wanted to tell it, like, not to call the supervisor, but... Uh, either way, I definitely don't accomplish that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think what... And you can always try and resist, or, um... I, I don't think I can resist. Oh, because you have no stress. Control. Yeah. All right. Well, do you want to use one of your flaws to shape the consequence and get some XP? Um, sure. XP. One thing I'll say is you, sh <laughs> you should have um, checked another flaw when you got a new power, so if you don't want to use mm. the one you already have checked, you can pick any of the others as well. Okay. Uh, I did not realize that. Alright. Um. Hmm. I'm gonna say I put the machine first mm. uh, as my other flaw. Um, hmm. I think you get the feeling the machine really, really wants to do something for you. Mm -hmm. Like it really wants to accomplish something for you. Like it needs to complete a task. Okay. Um. I mean, I don't know if I can ask it anything else. Uh, what are you, what are you doing? What are you trying to do? Um, the, the text changes to help desk, smiley face. Um, and then you get a long scrolling list of like, call supervisor, look up location, call local law enforcement, um, <laughs> play romantic music light show um and just kind of keeps scrolling like a dozen different options um i guess play romantic music i don't know it's gotta do something um i don't really like any of these up these other options um it starts uh, a little thing like reaches out and touches the car um and you see like mm -hmm. a flash of light and then very loudly through the truck like speakers um <laughs> it starts um playing a kind of chip tune version of my heart will go on extremely <laughs> loudly no 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 turn this down turn it down turn it down uh it starts flashing like pink lights um, and like little star lights. No, 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 no. This isn't what I wanted. Stop. It uh, it seems to be stuck in this like protocol loop and is playing My Heart Will Go On and you can oh hear the God. little like soaring oh. chip tune. Um, and I think as you see that, you look over and you see like on the, the wall about a dozen other cameras, their red lights turn on. And you see tiny no. little red spotlights go your direction. No. <laughs> this is a disaster. Oh my god. Um, but it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, help desk. Uh, it continues the lights and the music, but the little, like, um, font pops back up and it says more services yes no no uh you see this little head droop and the lights like turn off um but the music oh, no. is still playing um <laughs> and kind of like shaking the truck and i think you notice that noel is heavily sedated uh by jacob but this really loud music <laughs> he's trying to sort of like Crash a little bit where he's laying. Uh, and you can see him kind of like groaning and uh, getting uncomfortable. I'm gonna like put a hand on his shoulder and try to like try to sort of hold him down. No, it's okay. I'm trying to stop it. It's it just calm down, calm down. Um, I'm going to see like is is there anything that I can roll to like try to? Oh man. 
Yeah. Um, do you have like an electronic warfare kit or anything that maybe you could I, use to like I do hack into it? I do. Um, I do have that, so I'm going to Yeah, I mean I would like to try to hack it. All right. Um is that going to be operate? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. All right. <sighs> Roll 20 hates me. It does. Um you can always take a condition to auto succeed since you don't have stress. I will say that. Yeah, I think I'll I think I'll do that. <laughs> so I am now insecure. <laughs> Uh, so it's taking longer than maybe you expect it to. Um, I think maybe you've messed with like a similar model of camera before, so this should be really easy, but it just seems mm -hmm. to like, uh, not be working. And then suddenly you get in and you have access to its menu of options, everything from like sound, lights, protocol, outgoing messages. You just see like a full menu pop up of whatever you want to do with the camera. Uh, I turn the sound off first and foremost. It just like cuts in a soaring note. And then there's just <laughs> silence. Thank God. <laughs> um all right. So what are the other uh what are the what are the other settings in there? Uh you can see outward call, so like communicate. You can see uh, a whole host of like video options, so record, play, rewind, uh download. Um, and then you can also see what looks like the menu or you can like change menu options that it would ask. Okay. Um, hmm. So, uh, do I, do I remember when it was that, uh, Captain Mithri disappeared? Yeah. Um, Bales would have told you, um, that they're supposed to meet a couple of days ago. Okay. Um, so what I would like to do is I would like to play security footage from a couple of days ago, uh, whenever that was supposed to be. Mm hmm. Uh, I want to kind of like try to scrub through it a little bit. Okay. Uh, see if I can find. You know, any video footage of anybody matching her description. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll just for now kind of cut on you rewinding and searching the video because it'll take a little bit of time to find. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll go back to Jacob. You've just pushed open the door. Is that right? Uh huh. Um, mm -hmm. Scouts you... like right anxiously just up right, right behind him. Very much like not worry about personal Covering space. Me. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. practically bumping into him but not quite he's in mission mode he gets like this <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you look inside you see a very like bland uh, office so you sort of think of like a bank branch where it's just like gray carpet very like uh, bland almost like office store desk right there um, you can see two uh, office chairs, like black on wheelies. Um, and across from you, sitting in one of the chairs, is a man. Um, he has very short hair that's been gelled back a little bit. And he's not in a corporate suit. He's wearing like a blazer and, and um, a like sweater underneath. And he has a little tag that says Jameson. Um, and he looks vaguely familiar, like you might have seen him around town before. Um, and he's sort of sorting through papers and he looks up and he says, ah, you are here for the negotiation? Uh, yes, we are. Excellent. Uh, are, if you you'll the, just... are you the indetermined negotiator of the uh, flexible variety? Exactly. I wear many jackets here. This is my undetermined jacket. He moves to the laser. And then I have my proper formal negotiation jacket. He points over to like a suit jacket that's on like a little door hanging. Uh, and then I have my unfriendly negotiation and he points over to a leather jacket on the other side of the office. 
So that questionnaire that I filled out and put my thumbprint on was essentially to figure out which jacket you were going to put on before we got here. Is that right? Yes. And since you haven't decided, we're going to begin the negotiations. And based on the tenor of the conversation, I'll engage in the proper protocol. You mean put on the right jacket? And all the associated accessories, of course. Like probably sunglasses or a trucker cap or something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Are we ready? Scout, are we ready to negotiate? Uh, sure. Yes. All so right. I'll lean forward and say yes, as if I'm speaking clearly for a machine that has trouble understanding people. <laughs> Very well, we are ready to begin. Excellent. Please take your seats. Scout. Which, which, which one? Because I'll take opposite here. Scout, like, eyes up the chair very dubiously. I actually do want to look it over to see if there's any mechanisms or mm. weirdnesses I can detect that's going to, like, you know, dose me with a drug or capture my hands or, I don't know, something. Mm -hmm. Turn into a robot and smash me into pieces. <laughs> So, Excellent. Your stress is really rubbing off on me at this point. <laughs> so yeah, Scout like looks down at it suspiciously and then starts to look it over closely before getting before sitting down. I might not sit down. Let's find out what I see. Maybe. Uh, can yeah. I make a roll for this? This would be um, absolutely oh, analyze. I am so not good at analyze, but I'm gonna now. Try. Would you like? Um... If Jacob helps you out, you can always spend one stress to give you a die. Um, or if you in some way go against your ideals of the time, I, the sell the team ideals, you can, uh, get an extra die. Hmm. You know what? I actually have a different, uh, skill called scan that I have a pip in. Um, and that might seem appropriate instead. I don't think I want to invest any other further resources into my paranoid examination of mm -hmm. the chair. Um, <laughs> but I think scan might fit a little bit better and also works mechanically better for me. So. It's cool yeah, just you do all. it just go quickly. Ahead and roll Sounds good. And I got a. It's not showing two. up. Two. You got a two. I see. Okay. Um. So I oh, think what it is, uh, unless you resist it, is um, or do condition is, your paranoia is for getting the best of you, and it's not that you can see anything suspicious, but the fact you can't makes you think there must be something suspicious. Like you can't, dis it doesn't look safe to you, but you can't see what's wrong with it. Uh, yeah, I, I sort of look at it a bit longer and then sort of... I go and sit in his chair and, and give him mine. Jacob, it is a very comfortable chair. Like it's like it molds to you with like perfect ergonomics. Uh, it's perhaps one of the most comfortable fancy chairs you've sat in. You're missing out, man. I will sit down in my chair, but gingerly and probably start a little bit if it seems to be adjusting to my parameters. So, so Scott, the worst part about sitting in this chair is that it's very cold. <laughs> my butt did nothing to warm it. If anything, it's dropped, it's dropped 10 degrees. Uh, um... Jameson sort of watching and waits for you to start maybe stop fidgeting a little bit. Uh, and then he focuses in on you, Jacob, and says, all right, so in the premise of negotiations, we have something you want, and that means you have something we want. So what is it you're bringing us? So and he sort of looks you up and down a little bit. <clears throat> uh, it says right on the form there, information. Yes, um, I, I see. Let me slow down. What information could you have that we wouldn't know? Mm. Well, let, let's say for a second that I don't. Would the negotiation be over right now? Well, it would mean you either made an incorrect declaration or you negotiated in bad faith. And then we would have to change the negotiation. Right. It would become either hostile or not understood. So the information that I have is the thing that I am giving, right? 
so where is the thing that you're giving? He like blinks at you a couple times and he says, well, you came to us. So uh, what is it you want? Uh, the return, uh, the safe return of one Captain Mithri. Hmm. Well, if we did have her and I'm not confirming any of that yet, uh, letting her go would cause us a lot of problems. You would need to have very, very valuable information. I'll play the audio. Are you like holding it in your hand? Yeah. Uh, he like has a very bland expression as he's listening and he sort of nods and he sort of nods. And he says, hmm. Now, the problem is, is that audio is here on our property. And per the contract you signed, any intellectual property you bring onto our grounds, we automatically own. You I hear like a percent agree. You hear a click as the door behind you locks. Um, so he says, so. Indeed, this copy is on your property. I admit that. So uh, now we have this information. Why would we need to negotiate? For the location of the master copy? That's the information that I have. I don't see it so much of a matter as being information that you have or don't have, or it's more a matter of um, what information you would rather not have, say, Sunville to have. Or everybody. Hmm. Because the information age was the last age, so we're technically past that now. Of course, we're in the post-processing age. Uh, I get the feeling me... you've been negotiating in bad faith with us all along. Where's Captain Mithri? Well, uh, it seems the negotiation is now that you want to release this information to, quote-unquote, he uses the air quotes, everybody. Um, so you want to offer not to do that? Is that what we're negotiating? Presently, that is what is on the table. I see. Um, would you say you're trying to sort of intimidate him or, uh, evoke a certain response or what kind of is the tone you're going for? Uh, I am trying to, uh, I, I want to say that I'm trying to enforce my will upon him. Hmm. Okay. I like that. Um, so I think what the question is, is he's trying to decide how seriously to take your threat. Um, so if we kind of see how, uh, good you are at portraying that you have, uh, the backbone to blackmail this entire corporation. Oh, yeah. You will see very quickly that I do. Um, sir, you're living within a, a place that is a community, right? You understand the concept of community? Well, I look out for my community. And currently, Captain Mithri is one of the members of that community. You understand that? So all I'm doing is really just making sure that my citizens are safe. We're all just trying to look out for each other. We want to look out for you, too. Don't get me wrong. You are right next to us. Practically neighbors. But you're mm. going to have to bend a little. Maybe stop using less of our town's folk as your personal test subject. Maybe, uh, you know, just slow down with the whole taking our people thing. We're not trying to put you out of business. That ain't why we're here. You bring revenue into the town. It's important. We get that. Well, let's roll to see how he takes it. Oh, man, I'd uh, love to back you up on that, but if I fill my last stress box, it will be full. <laughs> uh, do, do I have a way to boost that at all? Hmm. Um, you can spend two stress to get an extra die. Hmm. Um, or if you have some way that you can kind of fit in selling out your ideals in order to do this, you can get an extra die for selling out. 
Yeah, I don't see any way to really do that in character. Uh... All right. Well, then I'll just do it as is. Ooh, six. Ooh, I'll take it. Excellent. Um, I think as you're saying this, you see a little bit of like a muscle spasm in his face, which reminds you of Noel right before he kind of lost it. Um, and he leans forward and he says, uh, sort of through like gritted teeth, almost like talking through pain. Um, this is my town too. They, they won't let me leave. If you, if you help me get out of here, I'll show you where she is. Now we're negotiating. Well, come on then. Before I... you scare our ride off. Come on. Uh, do you like stand up or? Yep. All right. He, he gets up with you. You can see he's like starting to shake a little bit. Um, and he kind of glares at the little camera that's still next to Scout. Um, and he says, they're going to they're gonna hit the reboot. Yeah, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to do a little quick emergency surgery. This is going to hurt a lot. I'm going to uh, try and quickly repeat the process that I did with Noel. All right. As Using the comp... Using the combination of my ice powers to help numb it and uh, slow down the circuitry and the medical kit. All right. Let's and see how. As he's doing that, I'm going to attempt to like sort of turn to interpose myself between the camera and what he's doing, the little camera bot. And this is when I make my move. I'm just going to I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of move over near the camera bot and and then just pounce on it and try to capture it. Like, like I'm trying to cat, capture a cat, and I'm really bad at capturing cats. Because <laughs> that's not how you capture a cat, unless you want to get scratched or bit, or both, so. Uh, do you want me to roll a doctor roll or the elemental thingy? Um, I think that'd be up to you if you're leaning more on your powers, or if you're leaning more on, like, your, your medical tools. Which one you're uh, I feel my powers are, especially after last time, advanced enough now I don't need to worry about just... Uh, chilling something down so much, so I'm gonna use a doctor roll mm -hmm. since it's more of a, you know, medical procedure. Yeah. Did it work? There we go. Four. All right. So it's gonna work with a uh, complication. Um. I think the complication is the uh, when you went for the medical like tools and started working on it, um, mm -hmm. Scout. At the same time, you were going to like scoop up the camera, um, and as you sort of scoop it up, it starts making an alarm sound, kind of like a fire alarm. And you're sort of like holding it, but you can see like red light flashing in your arms. Okay, uh, I'm gonna hold up my, um, I'm gonna, hmm, should I do something crazy and stupid? No, I'm not gonna do something crazy and stupid. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take out my meta tool and, uh, see if I can pop the case open and, uh, basically, like, yoink the battery on this. I don't mm -hmm. wanna hack it or get it to do something different, I basically just wanna pull the plug on it so it'll be deactivated, not be able to give away position or information. Obviously, they'll know that, hey, you know, something got messed up. But uh, mm -hmm. they won't actually be able to see exactly what we're doing. <laughs> and I can stuff it in my bag. <laughs> okay. Um, I think if you take some time to do it, you won't need to roll. But if you want to do it like as quickly as possible, you'll probably have to roll to see how that goes. I'm pretty sure this is like in the moment and under duress. So it seems, yeah, seems like I want to roll this. <laughs> All right. So I think fabricate, if I could use mm -hmm. that. All right, I get two dice in that, so... Oh, great. Um, I think what starts happening is you sort of, like, pop open the casing, um, and as you go to, like, reach in for the wire, it kind of, like, slips out through your arms um, and lands on the ground. Uh, if you're not going to do anything to stop it, it's going to sort of run out the 
towards the door. Um, Which is locked behind us currently. Exactly. And <laughs> yeah, so it sort yeah. of hits the door and does the thing where it, like, it hits it and stumbles back and then goes and hits it and stumbles back. Yeah, all... those, little, those little Death Star <laughs> droids. Yeah. <laughs> all, <laughs> all dignity out the window. Scout is just diving for this thing. Just scrambling, <laughs> trying to catch it. Whatever. Uh, uh, I so... think it's so in its like little thing. You're able to tackle it for sure. Okay. So is that, uh, I guess, I, am I resisting the consequence or am I, um, should I do use a condition to auto succeed then? Or is that just the result? Um, if you want to auto succeed, you'll be able to tackle it before anything worse happens. No, that's all right. Uh, I can live with this. Carry okay. On. Um, so I think what it is, is as you tackle it, it's like turns from like red uh, to like a very kind of like poisony green looking. Um, and you see like a matching colored text appear on the door and it just says warning uh, lockdown. Um, oh, that's not good. <laughs> we're going to cut away in that moment to <laughs> Luna. Um, you're in the truck sort of going through the, the video footage. And you get to a point where you, you recognize Captain Mithri because you saw her uh, when you all were out at sort of the antique warehouse trying to get the medicine. Um, and you can see that you see her and Noel walk up to the door. Um, and uh, the same woman sort of comes out in the business suit. And you can see Captain Mithri is sort of like gesturing and she reaches uh, for her weapon and um she suddenly just collapses and you can see the woman with the suit uh, is holding a syringe um and she sort of holds it up almost threateningly at like noel and you see him back away um mm. and he sort of disappears from the view and then you see um she starts to move a little bit as if waking up uh, and the woman holds out a hand to her and she sort of takes the hand and is sort of helped up and just walks in to the woman with the woman uh, into the the warehouse out of sight. Hmm. Okay, is there any um is there a camera feed in the warehouse as well? Um, it goes all the way to the entrance when they like get to sort of the, the white picket gate and then go in. Um, mm. I think the last thing you see is Captain Mithri stops at the gate and seems to be like talking to the woman and nodding and talking and looks very calm. And then on her own, Catherine Mithri turns around and walks into the warehouse. Okay. Um... All right, and that's the most recent uh, image of her on the camera feed? Yeah. Okay. Ugh. All right. Well, we know where she is. Probably. Um. Huh. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do from here. Um, I don't know. I would I would assume that like I have like a group text or something with uh, Scout and Jacob. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I will send a message to that. Um. And just say, hey, I found out where she is. And if they're not able to open it and look at it, then that's fine. Um, but the information is out there. I, and just, I, think I just don't think that I can contact them by like calling them right now. Yeah, I think when you send it to them, you see on the camera enter, like the camera you've hacked into, 
mm-hmm. uh, a notification pops up and it says lockdown initiate uh, initiated. Oh shit. Uh, do I know like what that lockdown is on? Is um, it just on the on the on the system or I think if you like look at the notification, it pops up mm-hmm. um, with like a long message saying uh, due to a uh, security alarm protocol seven five seven, the entire uh, second floor of the warehouse has been put into lockdown. Uh, shelter in place and uh, neutralization measures may be enforced soon. Shit. Neutralization measures. Well, that sounds fun. That's not good. Nah, it's probably nothing. Uh, um, hmm. Well, I for one would certainly appreciate if we had a ride out of here. Yeah. Because I think we're leaving a bit hot. Do you want to think about it when we cut back to them for a minute? Yeah, I I think that's a good idea. Um, I mean, I don't want to leave. Mm-hmm. But I also, like, I know it's not going to go well if I go in and try to do anything. So, mm-hmm. uh, I think that pretty much all that I can do at this time is just wait. Okay. So I think we kind of cut away and we see you looking at that message, the slight green light from the alarm, like, on your face. Uh, and then we cut back to the room where that green light is much brighter as the, the lockdown message is on the door. Um, mm. And the two of you, you can hear like a muffled intercom. It's like that where you, if you've ever been on the Boston subway, where you can't actually make out what they're saying, but you can tell they're like, <laughs> uh, uh, the the old Charlie Brown's mom syndrome. Yes. <laughs> Oh boy, we're in it now. It's got takes out the object that was the bulge under his jacket, and it's this sort of like large, blocky thing. Uh, it's it's basically like a pistol grip that's attached to this sort of uh, uh, cobbled together frame of a variety of different uh, original metal or carbon or plastic sources, and it's got a, a kind of a conglomeration of different battery packs that are that are attached and connected together in a, a, a variety of different ways. And then like toward the front, it's got more of like a like a shotgun grip and this sort of barrel looking thing. And he takes it out and like flicks something and part of it like slips, like swings forward and locks into place. And then he reaches toward the front of it and pulls this lever back that swings and he goes, it, it makes several like ratcheting noises. And then forces it back and then it's got that sort of like a camera flash or like electronics sound like bzzz, little uh little high-pitched uh thing that like for anyone who still has really really good hearing can still hear the high-pitched thing going it's it's sort of a uh, rattling a little bit in, in his hands man i hope this thing works jumping jesus on a pogo stick it should be non-lethal at least i literally brought a club I brought a club. In case we had to fight our way out of here, I brought a club. <laughs> I feel so dreadfully inadequate right now, I can't even talk. Uh, I think it's Jameson, who you've sort of finished working on, he's sort of like holding his head. And Scout, he's staring at you, and he's like, am my brain dead? And he looks over at you, Jacob. Did you fry my brain? What's no. going on? What is that? Oh, my God. Uh, Have I made a mistake? Little thing so it's out that's why you're bleeding sorry it's sort of a scout turns and it's in the background is sort of seen like there's like just sort of the shattered remains of the camera thing because i finally just stomped on the damn thing a bunch uh while the camera was on luna uh well negotiated 
Uh, I think we're going to need to get out of here. Great. Can you get that door? I look at the door, uh, try to open it. I think it's locked. Yeah. Do you yeah, have a key? Is. I turn to the uh, negotiator. Former uh, negotiator. Yeah. He sort of like fumbles at his chest, almost like he's looking for a lanyard and he sort of realizes it isn't there. And then he, he reaches over uh, and he pulls on, he sort of sheds the sports blazer and pulls on the leather jacket. And he says, okay. yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. And he, one hand, he pulls out uh, a firearm um, and he's like, nope, that's not it. And then he reaches into the other and pulls out a lanyard with like a key card on it. And he says, uh, this should work. If they haven't identified that I've gone rogue. Oh my God. They're going to kill me. We need to get out of here. We, we need to go. We need uh, to find the Captain Mit- Mitchell. Mithri. Or, Mithri. Yes. Mithri first. <laughs> she's going to be, she's going to be in the initiation wing. They, uh, they decided to do a, a hostile takeover to bring her into the firm. But she, I think she's still getting her, her, uh, education. Brain. Brainwashing oh, implants. Bad. We, don't, we don't call them that. Uh, All right. So, I think it's in the, the basement. The wing's down in the basement. Great. What's the fastest way there? He looks down at the ground, looks up at you, and he's like, well, if you don't have a rocket launcher, uh, we're going to want to probably take the back stairs. Uh, and he turns, and there's like a... Um, a door outline sort of behind where his chair was um and he takes the key card and sort of presses against it um and there's a second and then it sort of makes a ding and slides open um and he says uh, hey, uh here this way hey scout is that big fancy gun a rocket launcher by chance uh no no, I think I used up most of my explosives on the, the hive. Right, I remember. That was a good time. Now, this, uh, this is a fairly short-range uh, electrical discharge. Uh, should be enough to disable any uh, organic or robotic uh, enemies we might encounter, hopefully without any permanent damage. I mean, I haven't exactly tested it on a living person, though. Is that like the one that the city police use? A uh, little bit. Uh, no, I actually. Those uh, are only this big. That thing is the size of me. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, uh, put three of them together because uh, I figured I could improve the output. I, I daisy chained them and then uh, added the extra battery packs. Yeah, I see all the extra battery packs. It looks like it shoots Game Boys. <laughs> That's. Why would I shoot Game Boys? But I mean, it sounds. I think, uh, Jacob, you feel Jameson, like, grab your arm, and he's like, is this, is this a debate club, or is this, like, an escape, escape group? We need to get out of here. They're gonna, they're gonna be flooding the hallways. Jameson, we're officially an escape club. Thank you for asking. (laughs) Let's get that door. First meeting of the escape club commences. Motion to move out the door now. Um, yeah, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Where's your hand, Jameson? (laughs) <laughs> there we go. You're out voted anyway. Open the damn door. Uh, so he sort of uh, pushes the door and it slides open. Uh, and he sort of pokes his head into a hallway. Uh, and he says, "Okay, I don't, I don't hear the the sweeping team yet. We gotta go though." Uh, just, just point. I'll go first. Uh, he I'll sort of like the rear. he I'll points up, like this. I hold up the gun and said. That, by the way, if I go down, you have to use this thing. Just you gotta prime it with the lever before each time. Otherwise, it might explode the batteries. If you think and I that turn I'm and start touching that with anything <laughs> but a very long stick, you have another thing coming, Scout. I will break it just by looking at it. Funny. <laughs> All right, you then. I turn to the uh, uh, negotiator, but you know, stay behind me. Uh, do they use? Do they tend to use lethal force in situations like this, Jameson? Yes, uh, I think green means terminate. No, is that is that purple? I don't know. And he's sort of looking at his key card. I can never remember the colors. He's sort of like poking at it. You see little messages flashing on it. He's like, I shouldn't have skipped the training. Skip. 
<sighs> All right. What are they armed with? You know? That that wasn't my expertise. I think guns though. Uh, he sort of looks at the gun he's holding. I think something like this, maybe. Bigger? I think it was bigger. bigger. Okay, that's all I needed to know. Bigger. That's fine. Uh, is the door a slidey door? Mm-hmm. Or is it a swingy door? Slidey door. Okay. Good to know. All right, let's get Toadsaw stairs and head down them. Yep. Scout's taking point, all the while saying, why am I taking point? I don't know. Are you wearing body armor? No, I, I, I am. Why don't I take point? Because I have the gun. You know that's a ranged weapon, right? I don't think you want to be standing anywhere near the front of this thing when I discharge it. That's fair. On the other hand, so... I don't think I've been shocked real hard before. <laughs> Jameson's like, wait, you said this is the first meeting of the escape club? You haven't done this before, have you? <laughs> What, broken somebody out of a large corporate facility? No, not this week. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Oh god, I'm gonna die. Hey, Jameson, don't talk like that. Look, we're all gonna die. <laughs> Good talk, bud. I think he's kind of just nodding, like, not really processing what you're saying, but just like, yes, I'm responding. Good. Um, so you go in the hallway, it's a very bare, kind of looks like a, a service hallway. Um, like if you've ever been in like a mall or something in the back where it's just like a very narrow, uh, sort of bland hallway. Um, and you can see that it goes in like four different directions. Um, and the walls, there's just slight green scrolling, uh, that says lockdown initiated everywhere. Um, and he's sort of turning, Jim's is turning in a circle, looking around, and he's like, I think, okay, down is, okay, left, left is up, no, okay, I think it's this way, and he sort of points, uh, down the right hallway, and says, I think, this is stairs, it's either up or it's down, but there's stairs, definitely. I just quickly run that way as soon as he's made up his mind. I really hope I, I really hope he's making the right call. But I don't have time to, to find out or to wait and ask him so. And yeah, if he needs to decide longer, then we'll just be stuck here when the guards come. So mm -hmm. won't that be nice? Uh, so you go down the hallway and you it sort of dead ends, but you can see the slight outline like the slidey door that was in the room you came from. Um, and there's an icon of stairs uh, on the door. That looks like the stairs. Yep, Scout will kind of move up to the door and try to open it. Is there a handle or something, or is it just one of those doors that's supposed to slide when you get up to it? Uh, it's just supposed to slide. Um, hey, Jameson sort of, like, pulls it off his neck and just hands it to you, Jacob. Great. Bleep. Uh, a message pops up, and it says, Lockdown initiated. Override protocol? Question mark. What do you think, Jameson? Override protocol? Yes, of course, yes. I think. No? Yes. Yes. Uh, you get a little, like, frowny face um, and says, override protocol only in emergencies. Confirm? Yes, no? Yes. Uh, it slides open. Um, and you can see... Sorry, my computer just did something. Um, you can see that the outline around the door turns orange, um, but it's open for you. I like orange. Orange is good. We can work with orange. Jameson, is orange bad or good? Orange is, it's something. Orange is, they had some sort of war game. Orange is awful, but that starts with an A. Orange is outrageous. Orange is, he's just kind of like mumbling himself going through words it's like oh i i don't I hate those trainings those trainings are awful <laughs> oranges scouts uh just heading down the stairs quickly well we're going yeah we're going through i mean yeah <laughs> it's opportunity negotiator dude sure oranges opportunity i like that yeah yeah what's your yeah. name did you tell us your name jameson I, oh jameson. jameson yeah you have a name tag duh yeah. It's just hard to see under the leather jacket now. Can he I sort of, like, straightens his leather jacket a little bit, like, 
looking a little more solid. Yeah. Time to hostilely negotiate. Uh, okay, we're downstairs. Uh, now where? Um, so you're kind of like going down and going down and going down. Um, How much farther is it? The basement. It's it's the farthest down. Right. No, of course. Basement. Uh, how many basements are there? I don't. I don't know. It's been a long time since I went to the uh, the education. I think I don't. Just go till it doesn't go anymore. I think. Okay. Uh, so the stairs finally like bottom out, and it feels very cold down here. Um, and you notice that sort of like the green warning lights haven't followed you, um, and it's more just like dim um, lights down on the floor. Uh, and he says, "Okay, so the education we're down here. Um, we need to find the new recruit education. I think all I remember is." Fuchsia is a bad color, so just don't go towards the fuchsia. I, I like fuchsia. It's a nice shade. Uh, anyway, uh, Scout, as he's talking, Scout's been sort of digging out his communicator and uh, trying to get a signal out to Luna. Am I having any luck? Yeah, you get a signal down here. All right. Oh, hey, I'm getting a signal. Huh, I thought the lockdown would have jammed it. Uh, Luna, are you, are you getting this? Can, can, yeah, can I can hear you. I can hear you. What's going on? Uh, we're in the basement. We're doing things I probably shouldn't describe over the comms. They're trying to kill us, I think. There's lots of colors, and I don't know if they're good or bad. Fuchsia's uh, bad. We know that. Okay. Uh, how are things out there? Uh, the hornet's nest and all that? Uh, um. That was like three weeks ago. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of cameras. Um, no people, no lights or anything. Um, I I think it's okay. Nothing looks like an immediate threat. Um, I can try to figure some stuff out for you, if you can stay on the line. Yeah, we're we're in their re-education oh. center. We need to find the new recruiting, uh, the the new recruit uh, orientation laboratory. Okay. I'm oh, gonna and see we if have, I can help. And we have a defector. Oh. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, he clears his throat. I prefer freedom fighter. <laughs> Alliteration. Nice one, JJ. Right. Well, that's even better. We have a dumb defector. <laughs> Alliteration for you. Um. So. All right. Am I am I still uh, hacked into the system for the like little camera drone, dude? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see if I can uh, dig around in there and find like information on the uh, layout of the basement. Um, I think as you're digging around, it you don't find like a, a map immediately, but you do find a list under like outgoing communication. It has a list of different centers. Um, so you can see like indeterminate negotiation, uh, reception, backdoor negotiation. Um, and down at like the very bottom, you see a recruitment center uh, sentry post. Okay. Um, I'm gonna click on that entry and see, uh, see what I can find out about it. Um, it pops up with, um, like, a you can see it's almost like a programmed script that the camera would send back that's mm -hmm. saying, you know, subject blank, uh, is presenting for relocation. Please meet them on the first floor and initiate protocol JJ7. Um, and then under that, there's another message option, which is like, uh, defenses have been breached, uh, neutralize all recruits who have not completed training. And then under that, um, is one that says, uh, final evacuation protocol exclamation mark. Hmm. Uh, can I get information about any of those? I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on that last one and see if I can, um, 
hoping to get information on it. Uh, a message pops up and it says, initiate, edit, cancel. Uh, I'm gonna go to edit. Uh, you get a little blinky cursor on the message, mm -hmm. and you can see that you can basically just rewrite what the message says. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna rewrite it, I'm just gonna initiate it. <laughs> Chemical evacuation sounds like the worst hangover ever. <laughs> All right, uh, you initiate it, and you see, um the the little camera like it's red light starts flashing fuchsia mm -hmm. um and then we look up you can oh, see on the wall that. all of them start flashing fuchsia um and you get like a, a message back and it's sort of like there's some typos like someone wrote it really quickly mm -hmm. um and it says uh jill is this a prank is this for real god the protocols have started this better not be a prank <laughs> Um, I'm gonna wait a couple seconds before I respond. All right. Uh, Jacob and Scout, where you are, the sort of like dim lighting of the hall, everything is just flooded with fuchsia light. Um, and oh, so pretty. Uh, you see little like silhouetted uh, shapes um, on the wall and they're kind of like uh, generic human shapes. And um, they are like running down the wall, um, heading in a direction. Do they look oh. armed? Like they're running they're... to shoot us? Nope, they're kind of like, if you see like the generic human shape on a bathroom, like they have pretty much that much detail of just kind of like a figure like running down the wall. You know, I was very calm up until now because I uh, assumed that new light was, you know, magenta. But I'm thinking it might be bad. Bad for us or bad for them? You know, sometimes bad can be universal. Uh, Jameson grabs you by the arm. He says, I remember this part of the training. I think... It's about time. I think we get eaten and more fertilizer. I'm sorry, what? I think there's... I just remember there was like this sort of like animation of like this weird robotic machine and it came and it ate the person and then it was like this circle of life thing and then we were fertilizer and then there were helicopters of people taking off so are so are comms open right now like can i hear what's uh, sure. happening yep i've got or... the communicator in okay. my hand uh so hey, uh, Scout, do me a favor and ask your buddy if that's actually what happened. Uh, is that what really happens? I mean, I think so. It was really long training, and we might have been drinking a little bit by then, but I'm pretty sure that's what the animation was. Mm. Well, uh, either way, uh... You all need to get out of there. We need to find Corporal Mi Mithri. Captain Mithri. I got the hopefully name right this, this time. Is... <laughs> I mean, hopefully this will provide enough of a distraction to... Uh... Yeah, but which way? You know, there's there's there. hallways I all over the place. Did you, and like, now did they're you all pull a fire alarm? Pink. Uh, yeah, I kind of did. Oh, then everybody should be heading outside. Let's go. All right, we need to get toward the new recruit area, though, right? Because she'll be coming from there. But yeah, uh, I wanted to go to yeah, the employee rendezvous I mean. zone where they turn people into fertilizer. I think we should just get out of the building. Search the perimeter, find her there. I'm not leaving I mean, without the captain. But if she's yeah, not, no, I know, I know. If, if um, Mithri's not in here, though. Uh, because they went outside, uh, shouldn't we also go outside? 
Well, Jameson sort of speaks up. He's like, I think if she's finished her training or in the final stage, they'll have taken her out. But if she hasn't, I think she's what they call an acceptable loss. Uh, where do we, we find the acceptable loss room? I know where that is. We used to eat lunch outside of it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, some useful information. <laughs> All right, point the way. We don't have much time. Right, right, it's this way. And he, he, so he sort of walks you out of that, and you get to what looks like a very broad main hall, and you can see uh, people are, like, following the little icons on the wall heading in one direction. And it's kind of a mix of people in, like, lab coats, a couple of people who look like they're, they're security, um, and a couple of people in corporate suits. And they're all just kind of, like, talking. Uh, they don't seem super panicked, but they're all kind of moving the same direction. Uh, and he starts heading in the opposite direction up towards, like, the left. Um, and he says, uh, they'll have put them in the vault. It's, it's this way. Let's move. Scouts, All right. yeah, really sort of tweaked out at the moment, just on edge and... Just Going really, like, just, to be it's, cool. It's a wonder he hasn't <laughs> shot any of the people he's, like, jerked and point his, his, his <laughs> device at. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, I think it maybe sticks out to you that like people look at you and they see your device and they seem completely unfazed, uh, as if like that's a normal thing for them to see. Uh, we must be near R and D. And he says, uh, James says, yeah, yeah, they like to, uh, they do some experiments with the acceptable loss division. I don't know. I never wanted to ask about that. That's just about the most terrible thing I ever heard. Thank you, Jameson. And uh, n- not too long, you're the only one sort of walking in the hallway. Uh, and he takes you to the very end. And you can see that there's still like the fuchsia lights and the little icons streaming on the wall. Um, and then you get to a door. And it is uh, outlined in teal. Um, and the word across it just says uh, um, 100% loss. Oh, well, let's take a look in there. Oh, I really love the teal and the fuchsia together. It's a nice combination. This isn't the time to talk about nice color combinations. Yeah, I opened the door. Hey, we might die at any moment. I'm going to appreciate things. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Uh, Jameson tries to like take his key card back, and he like pushes it against the door. Um, and there's kind of a flicker. And then an orange comes across and just says, access denied. Oh, stand back. And I, I sort of <laughs> step, fo- step forward, step back Jameson. a little bit. And, uh, point- Jameson, he means it. He means it. Stand back. Oh, hold on a second. I turn and look over at Jacob. I haven't given it a name yet. Uh, have you considered Kevin? Yes, it'll do. All right, Kevin, let's do this. And I fire at the door to just blast out this. Hopefully, if it works as intended, blast like this cone of, uh, you know, Sith-like electrical discharge that will hopefully just fry the door. Uh, I'm not sure what to do for this. Um, I'm taking some liberties with the firearm equipment in my uh, pack, so... (laughs) <laughs> I like it. I like it. I love it. how the lightning blends with the teal and the fuchsia. <laughs> so nice. Um, <laughs> oh, I think I feel like this might be like an operate because it's kind of a more advanced firearm contraption. We're talking about the gun that he taped all the battery packs to? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just yeah. checking. Um, yeah, I guess I don't have any skill in operate, so we'll see how this goes. I'll go ahead and roll it. All right, what did I roll? I don't see it. Five. Oh, good. Okay, awesome. All right. Nice. Um, so it blasts the door open. Um, I think the the complication will be um, 
the the system registers that you've sort of breached the room and it's going to set off another alarm um, that the vault has been breached. Yeah, okay. That makes so, sense. Luna, you're probably the one who notices it. Suddenly you get like another notification uh, mm. and it to you, it says um, compost room breached uh, send down neutralizing agents. Everybody uh, avoid lower levels. Uh, can I override that? Yeah. Okay. You want to change the message? I would love to. Um... So, party in the break room. Everyone get cake. <laughs> 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 Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to change it to that. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, so you change it to that, it gets sent out, and what you all see is, um, the door, the teal, uh, turns to blue, and there's, like, little images of, like, confetti going out of it and like little balloons going up uh and the door just kind of like smoking falls in mm. Mm. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> now Thank that you. Kevin can stay. <laughs> <clears throat> After you. I'm glad it's nebulous like that. I really am, Scout. Hmm. I think, uh, Kevin likes to keep us guessing. <laughs> it's nice. I'm starting hmm. a whole family of K names. <laughs> hmm. Kevin, Karen, eventually little Kyle. I don't know if you want three. <laughs> Captain. Uh, sort of smoke clear as you can see. It's a like all white room. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. the kind of narrow and both sides are lined with um, what look like just like kind of white plastic hard chairs. Uh, uh, and you can see that there's uh, a collection of people, about a half a dozen, um, all wearing just gray jumpsuits, um, sitting in the chairs, not moving. And their their eyes are open, and like they're kind of blinking and they're breathing, so you can tell they're alive. But they're just like perfectly still. Besides that, is Mithri in the group? Yes, you can see that she's sort of in the middle of the group. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go check her out. Is that her? Looks kind of like her. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to check her out and see if, uh, you know, medically, if she's all right. <laughs> um, she looks perfectly healthy. Uh, she's not really, she's like slightly glazed over expression and is just looking straight ahead. Does she have the same kind of implant as uh, Jameson? Uh, yes. All right. How many people are in this room? Mm, about six. Wow, look at all these other people in here. Yeah. Well, this would be a lot easier if we still had a door. But I'm going to start... Yeah, well, Kevin's uh, third, Getting the I work guess. done on Mithri first and see how many of them I can get through before we get... Uh, Hey, uh, JJ, did Challenged they... Challenged in some way? Hey, hey, uh, JJ, did they train you on that piece you're carrying? He he looks at it. He says, yes, I think there were... I, I definitely had combat instructions, but... Uh, uh, he sort of reaches up where the, the implant used to be. I'm not sure if I still have access to that. Yeah, just try to rely more on your instincts. Uh, point and click, right? Uh, watch my back. You, me, and Kevin will cover the hallway. Uh, we need to give give Jacob uh, time to take care of business here. Um, just, uh, I don't want to kill anybody if we don't have to, so 
last resort, I say when I point to his gun. Aim low. Uh, when you say aim low, he kind of just points it at the ground a little bit. He's like, yeah, okay. Point and click. Got it. I can do that. That's easy, right? Can't go wrong. Yeah, I guess we'll take a position in the hallway then uh, to try to uh, deal with anyone who comes uh, chasing after us. I'll try to find somewhere I've got a good angle on a kind of a short range burst. So if a bunch of people come running around the corner, I can blast them all at once and they don't have a long time to shoot at me at longer range for a while if I can. But, uh, you know, I'll work with what I got. All right. Uh, Jacob, let's see how the how well you do in the time you have. Yeah, uh, before I uh, cut into anybody, uh, they're probably sedated in some way. I want to check on that, too. Okay. Um, I think if you check on them, you can tell that, uh, like, if you sort of, like, check their vitals, like, they're, mm -hmm. they, they seem to have, like, a pretty slow heartbeat. Um, okay. but you don't see any like dilation in the eyes or anything to say that. I just it want to make sure I have the like right drugs handy, like you know, stick mm -hmm. with stimulants and adrenaline stuff. Yeah, to make sure that they can move on their own. Uh, yeah, and I'll start doctoring at them, starting with Mithri. That went well. Ooh, it did six. That went very well. Um, so I think what happens is you're, you're getting pretty good at this. You've had some experience. Um, so you're, you're able to, to get out the implants of, are you trying for all six if you have time? If I have time, yes. Um, so I think you're, uh, finishing on the last implant and everyone's sort of like blinking as if waking up. Um, and you can see Mithri's like kind of methodically like stretching her arms and like fingers and sort of like moving around a little bit. Um, and as you finish the last one and you get that like kind of rush of, Hey, I did it. Uh, Scout, that's when you hear, um, a sound in the hallway that you heard a long time ago, um, which is the sound of like combat boots, steel toed combat boots echoing. Uh, down the hallway, and it sounds like they're getting closer. All right, I'll holler back. Company! Got it. Ready. All right, and... Um, I was like, man. all right, uh, but I need you all to follow me. And him, and him. Uh, everybody doing Okay. There's kind of some groans. Um, Mithri stands up and looks at you, Jacob, and she says, Captain? Aren't you the, aren't you the songster? Yeah. I mean, not today. Oh. Today I'm the vice president of the escape club. Escape club. Right. Oh. I heard you make your own fun out here. It's our first meeting. <laughs> uh she like reaches as if reaching for like a sidearm uh and looks over at you and says uh you got you got any real weapons on you i i'm a decent shot uh jameson does but he can't shoot him anymore all right uh she doesn't ask you who jameson is she just kind of like walks past you to the hallway um so scott you see her walk out in like the plain gray jumpsuit um, oh shit, we got new members. Uh, motion to uh, rapidly indict new members without hazing rituals. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Jameson, shut up. All right, you're all members. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Let's get out of here. And Scout starts, I guess, sort of moving, moving the way, but kind of carefully getting ready to blast a bunch of people who were probably filled with bullets. Hey, uh, Luna, can you tell where they're going to be coming from? Uh, I can try. That would um, be super information to have if you can get it. Yeah. Also, the truck. Um, uh, maybe have the truck somewhere close to where we come outside. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. We, um, we have a lot more friends yeah, I'll see now. Yeah, I can pull it up. Okay. Um, I don't know if we can fit everybody, but I'll see if I can pull it up. Also, um, well, there's some important matter of business. You have, 
You haven't joined the escape club yet. Uh, we'll grandfather you in. You're, 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 okay. you're part of the mass, uh, mass new group level, okay? Just. Uh, are you... I just assumed that Luna I was president. I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. All right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start up the truck. Um, you get to be president and... if you get the truck and we drive away. How's that? Nice. That's awesome. That sounds great. Um, all right. So I start up the truck. Um, I'm going to see if I can like pull up the menu on the little camera drone to see if I can, um, like, I guess, I don't know. Um, I'm going to try to figure out, like, where people are going to be coming from. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, like, security or... Um, yeah. Um, so I think, like, you might be able to hack into, like, the communication system to mm -hmm. sort of, like, pinpoint people. There isn't something naturally in the camera that's just going to point you to where they are, but you might be able to sort of, like, of the blow yeah. into them. Okay. You also notice there's another message of Jill question mark exclamation point. This better not be a prank. I'm missing cake. Hmm. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm going to type back. Well, maybe all the cake is gone and you got there too late. You ate the cake, didn't you? I know you did. Cake quarter. <laughs> oh come on i only took two pieces um and i'm gonna go back to uh trying to figure out uh what i what it is that i'm trying to figure out mm -hmm. on this camera drone all right uh is there like is there something that i have to roll for that yeah i think i, I think it's probably like an operate because you're kind of Okay. Reverse engineering um, its system. All right. Ah, fuck. That's a three. I have not rolled a single like good roll <laughs> in the past two sessions. It's pretty bad. Uh, oh my god. They're all good rolls, right? <laughs> so what I imagine happening is <clears throat> the other person who is mad at chill for the cake will not stop messaging you and like the notification mm. keeps popping <laughs> up and then you have to like close yeah. it and then it pops up and you're like not <laughs> able to really focus on what you're doing and it's like this mm. is just like the time when we had the cheesecake and you told me that there was an emergency drill and then you just <laughs> ate all of it and you left the plate on my desk and how could you do this you're like my cake enemy um, <laughs> um, I say to myself very quietly, man, Jill sounds like an asshole, <laughs> but also my kind of person. Uh, after a while, it's just a message being like, you're my nemesis. I'm going to take you down. Nemesis. I'll meet you at dawn. <laughs> um, so you have that going on. You're, uh, able to kind of like drive the truck around the property if you want to sort of eyeball things um but the person who has anno been annoyed at jill has sort of filled up your your camera drone i think you've made an em enemy of jill for life <laughs> <laughs> oh no i mean it's... i don't even know who jill is so i don't really care um right i'm just saying like this is but... a possible enemy for the future it sounds like she'll get yeah, her just true. desserts Season two, <laughs> The Wrath of Jill. <laughs> Episode oh one, God. Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> Let me just add this to GM notes. <laughs> Episode five and twenty. Yeah, I'm going to get in a fist fight with Jill on the local cheese fake Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a great episode. Careful, this is how the bees happened. Ah, that's true. That is how the bees happened. Um... All right. Opened my big stupid yeah, mouth. so I guess I'm not able to figure out anything about uh, where security is going to be coming from. 
based no. on that. Okay. How about a, a speedy exit? For example, yeah. where's the best place to shoot the wall with a rocket launcher? <laughs> Uh, well, my, my, uh, my screen is kind of filled up with, uh, notifications for this person yelling at Jill. Um, I don't know, I'll try to, I'll try to see if I can find it. Yelling at Jill sounds dirty. Yelling at Jill, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess Jill is their, like, uh, security manager or something. Um... I don't know. Keeps hmm. stealing cake. Well, between you and me, I think she sounds like kind of an a-hole. Yeah, kind of. So, exit strategy? Uh, I'm, I'm running, and, uh, you know, oh, just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We are, I think we are all per, yeah, on the move. Probably following those like lights to... for now. Yeah. Um... Sorry, I would like to cycle through like the current camera feeds in the basement mm. uh, and see if I can find any doors or obvious exits. And unless someone telling him otherwise, Scout is actually running back, I think, trying to head back towards where those other stairs were that we came down with. Cause... Mm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. <laughs> all right. Uh, so you all are running. Um, Captain Mithri has absolutely taken Jameson's firearm. Um, and uh, I think as you're running, uh, Scout, you see a, a shadow, like human-sized shadow, and Mithri immediately raises her firearm and shoots into it, and you just hear kind of like a thud and a slide. Um, and she says, looks like the company's here. We need to get out fast. Okay. Can we possibly do that without the gunfight? Yeah. Scout is looking down at the person who's been shot and like like is torn with wanting to go see if they're okay, but you know, nods and uh, the stairs are this way as far as I know. And I'll start leading up. Yeah, um Again, uh, I'm sort see, of like try to take point. I've got the the gun in front of me. Uh, I'm going to try mm -hmm. to kind of like stay in front of Captain Mithri. So maybe I can try to get a shot off with this thing before she kills somebody next time. But uh, okay. Uh, yeah, we're trying to do the whole no bloodshed thing, Captain. That sounds inefficient. I mm -hmm. know. She sort of like huffs and says, look, I just, I just want to get out of here alive. And if that means some people don't get out of here alive, that's fine by me. They are not good hosts. So they, they kidnapped you and did God knows what to your brain. I'm, I'm certainly not going to criticize your response, but let me try with this first if I can, but I guess do what you got to do. Um, uh, so as you're kind of, uh, approaching the, where you came in the door, uh, Mithri gestures with her firearm and you can see what looks like, uh, someone sort of crouched in the doorway. Um, and she says, looks like that's our way out. You going to take the shot or am I? Yeah. Scout just sort of steps up and rah, just sort of walks forward yelling and discharges the thing. Basically, fortunately, this, <laughs> you don't have to aim this thing too carefully, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to run mm -hmm. up and take a shot. Say hello to my oversized electrical friend. And let's see what happens. <laughs> Let's see, hunt, I think, would be appropriate for shooting somebody. Yeah. I'm still picturing Jesse Ventura and Predator. Three. Okay, I'm gonna use in I'm gonna take a condition of insecure to uh to <laughs> succeed on this because I want this to work. So there's a big <laughs> sort and uh the blast just nails whoever's there and hopefully I knocks them out of them and kill them. That gun was really big. <laughs> and, uh, like, the battery packs in the back sort of, like, pop, and one of them flies off. And, uh, gives me a little bit of a, a little bit of a startle, and, uh, okay. <laughs> I sort of pull the thing back a couple more times. I think maybe one left. All right, oh, yeah, We're gonna you die see... down here, aren't we? 
you see someone, it looked like he was wearing like a black jumpsuit uh, and combat boots um, and was holding like a, a rifle and he slumped down on the ground. Um, and if do you start moving up the stairs or what do you do next? I'm going to take his rifle. He'll wake up eventually. Mm -hmm. Scott and we have, sort of leans and we up. have you know, half a dozen people who are unarmed. Yeah, and Scout sort of uh, leans up against the the wall uh, next to the door, just uh, sort of breathing heavily for a moment. He looks like he's a uh, he needs a moment or, or something. He's he's definitely shaken by what he's just gone through or what he's been going through. <laughs> uh, three hey, you're doing great. Really good work, man. Okay. This isn't the sort of thing I normally do. This isn't like a regular day for me. No, no, of course not. Thursday. Right. Good talk. Thursday. Let's go. Uh, Mithri sort of pauses by you and says, uh, you, you need an arm or you gonna make it? You need some help? Uh, it sort of looks a bit determined, though, sort of face dripping with sweat and sort of sh a bit mm -hmm. shaky. You know, so my arms are shaking a bit as I'm holding up uh, Kevin a bit some and uh, look down and there's a that sort of like telltale bzzz, whine and the little bzz, bzz, sort of zaps toward the back. Uh, only way out is up. There, that's just that sounded damn near like optimism, Scout. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get back to our rescue. Uh, At this point, like Scout seems to be like he seems to be a bit more willing to let Mithri take the lead. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I'm feeling a bit insecure, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not leading the charge as much at this point. <laughs> Uh, she, she sort of like pauses next to you and says, all right, so we're just going up some stairs and she looks over at you, Jacob, and says, uh, hey, you know, any, you know, any marching songs or victory songs or what was it? Escape club songs. Oh, Give yeah, us a I, yeah. I know three of them. And if we actually manage to escape, uh, I'll sing them to you later tonight. Okay. Uh-huh. Let's make Always it Always later. Getting out of the, <laughs> we're in the middle of the escape, Captain. It's not you, just stealth, you know? She uh, sighs uh, and says, all right, well, let's get going. Uh, and looks up and says, so just up these stairs? Let's hope so. I'll take point. It's the office, then the hallways, and then outside. Great. I shoulder the rifle and I head up the stairs. All right. Um... What I think might make sense, because you're all trying to basically escape at this point, right? Yeah. Um, is I wonder if just doing like a group roll to see how getting out goes uh, might work. Um, so that would be like a maneuver, or if you want to just go for like sprinting, maybe more like an exert to try and... Uh, beat the security team to get out. Uh, maneuver sounds good to me. I don't have the stress to spare much, but I'm, I'm willing to, to go for it. And I'm trying to cover our chase with a, you know, a thin layer of ice just to make it difficult mm. for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to do a group roll, you both would just roll maneuver. Um, and then... Jacob, if you're able to, since you're taking point, kind of leading it, you would just take stress for any failed rolls. Okay. I do not have maneuver, unfortunately. So All right. I'll lead it then. <laughs> I'll make suggestions. Uh, and don't you have way. the, don't you, you don't have the stress though, right? I've got one stress, so, you know, I can, I can deal with I... it. It's not the worst thing if I, <sighs> it's just the two of us making the roll. So if it comes up to paying one stress, I can pay one stress, right? Or would I have to pay for my failed roll too? Mm -hmm. What happens if you don't have enough stress to pay for it? 
Uh, then you'll be. That's a good question. Does it still just max out and not carry over, or do you like max out and still don't get it? Um, I mean, I think we'll just say you just max out. I think I'm feeling like it's narratively appropriate for me to finish this mission with a full stress meter, so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna volunteer for this. <laughs> If that's all right with you, Jacob. So we both roll maneuver. Mm-hmm. And we'll take the best result for the two of you. Well, those are both super good. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm. Hmm, I don't know that I have any way to influence this. Um, Jacob, uh, can you take a condition on your meat bod maybe to push things uh, into succeeding as well as uh, stressing out? I can, I think. I'm not sure if we have any other options other than, you know, failing, which, which might be fun too, but I don't have uh, anything I can think of that I could do. Yeah, how does that work? Um, sorry, what was the question? So we, we, it's a group roll. So we take the better of any of the results, right? Uh, yeah. And then we the leader takes one stress for every failed result. Uh, mm -hmm. at this point, we don't have any other ways to influence the role other than for one of us to take a condition on our meat bod, which was the maneuver roll, which I've already done. So I can't, but Jacob so might will. be able to, so. If he were to buy up his thing to a success, I would still fill up my stress meter, but then we would also still succeed. Correct. But I would be hurt. And then Jacob would get hurt in the process. Yes. Done. And then uh, make sure for Scout uh, that you're marking the XP for rolling with your maneuver while hurt. Okay. Um, and then... All right. So... Uh, you're able to get up the stairs um, and sort of get to the hallway. And what I imagine uh, is, Jacob, you're making sure, like, the, the others get out in time. Mm -hmm. um, and so you might be the last one there. Um, and a uh, sort of sour smelling gas starts filling the hallway um and you probably take in like one breath and feel your lungs sort of burning and your nose burning before you're able to to break out to fresh air oh bummer all right And then one last thing. This is a complicated roll. Scout, since you were hurt, can you roll a condition die to see if that adds an extra anything to what happened? All right. So a six means being hurt gives you an extra advantage in some way. Um, so... Hmm. What I imagine, maybe... Um, and you can, unless something comes to you immediately, is uh, a security guard sort of looks at you and you can see like they're trying to figure out if you're dangerous, but they notice you're limping and sort of think of you as like, oh, this is no threat. Okay. Yeah, that, that sounds fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of Pity moving you. along and I've got the gun and I might have, you know, I might have seemed like a threat, but the angle that, that he saw me move at just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. It seemed like you had a super shitty walking stick. Yeah, and there's like people yeah. walking with us, and we're just going to the right employee rendezvous, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he probably looks at you, and he's like, "Oh, another R and D accident." Sorry, <laughs> just out sorry for about a short that. Armed walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're uh, they're gathering in point uh, J. I think it was a uh, J blue red. You know where that one is, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you are. Yeah. You, you, you need to be more careful. You, you should you should really uh, make sure you see the doc after we uh, finish this lockdown. 
<laughs> Scout's sort of anxious, nervous, and shell shocked to look at his face. Just probably just helps to sell the impression. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. J blue. Red. Red. J blue. Red. Fuchsia. Everything fuchsia. Fuchsia bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. You carry on. Uh, you, you folks take take care. All right. Uh, sort of like waves you out and sort of focuses back um, and lifts his, his weapon as if waiting for the fugitives to run out after you. Sort of give him a dubious sidelong look as we're moving away to make sure he's not just going to shoot us in the back and this wasn't some sort of ruse. Mm-hmm. Well, no, yeah, just give him focusing. a doobie. <laughs> uh... When you get out, it's the just kind of gravel, and you can see like different groups churning. Um, and you see that all the cameras on the walls have turned different cover colors and are like spotlighting different areas. Um, and you can see sort of people are gathering during the around the different spotlights. Okay, everybody, be cool. Uh, I think Mithri like kind of looks you up and down looks at your walking stick or club and is like, uh-huh. Right. Cool. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> Jameson's kind of clutching you, Jacob, a little bit now. Uh, and he's like, we... We need to get out of here. They're going to know something's wrong. We got to get out of here. We are on our way out of here. Yeah, Scout's sort of walking, limping toward that way. Come on. Just yeah, we're act trying to along. nonchalantly fly casual towards the pickup. All right, so you're heading like towards the Luna, we're outside. We could really use a ride out of here. Okay, okay, I'm on my way. Uh, where exactly are you i press the position icon indicator on the encrypted communicator to give her a location blip all right i'm going to drive to that we will be the group of people trying really hard to look inconspicuous <laughs> <laughs> all right um as you approach the like the main door, um, you see someone in a uh, like sort of dark green jumpsuit uh, jumpsuit holding a, a clipboard uh, and looks over at all of you. And then Scout focuses on you uh, and is like, "You're you're Roger from R and D, right? What what's your rendezvous point? We need to we need to register you in." Uh, Scout is gonna. Give him a face full of Kevin. <laughs> he just doesn't know what to do. He's a bit... Just just raises red, the gun and red. blasts him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you say you fire? Uh, yeah. I just, just no. raise... Just, just point the gun at him. Uh, he collapses. Clipboard kind of sliding across the gravel. Uh, Mithri's like, yeah, yeah, that was real cool, friend. Uh, and she lifts her firearm and says, so now we run, right? Run, Scout says. <laughs> <laughs> and proceeds to try to run with his limp. Yeah. Uh, I think kind of in the chaos, you're able to sort of run out towards the door. Um, and Luna, I imagine you're, you're driving up with the truck. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, and so as you're approaching the, the entrance in the truck, uh, you see the woman who's in the, the business suit, the one who originally greeted you. And uh, she says, oh, you're departing. Would you feel like to fill out a customer satisfaction survey? Oh, my uh, God. Yes, not I'm... really. I mean, no. Uh, she looks sad. Uh, she looks very sad. It's like the first real motion you've seen. And she's like, well. It's very helpful feedback. We really do like to improve, but I understand. I understand. I just, I hope you come again. Oh, we understand. Our business is uh, very important to you. Thanks. 
All right. Drive safe! And she sort of waves. Thanks! And I, and I and load I kinda... escapees into the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scout sort of wildly clambers into the cab, tossing this sort of, like, smoking, blackened, fused-together mass of something that was once technology into the back. Looks like it, it, a couple things thump off. It, it looks like they might have been batteries of some kind. Mm-hmm. Or Game Boys. Punch it! We gotta get out of here! It looks like his face is red, is like just sweat all over. He's just completely lost all of his composure. You've never seen him like this. Okay, okay. Uh, we gotta get everybody into the truck. Working all on right. it. Yeah, yeah. Don't leave okay. anybody behind. This place is awful. We're we're not we're not going to <laughs> scout. It's okay. Just get in the all truck. Right. I have to fit seven people in the bed of the pickup and then get up to the cab, so... No, it's not okay! They're hacking people's minds! Nothing is ever going to be okay! Okay, okay, well, we're we're gonna get them out. I get the last person on and I tap the side of the truck, you know, thump, thump, like, let's get going, and I hop in the back with them. Okay, I just, like, I, I, I shift into drive and I just, like, slam on the gas uh, without even thinking about it. All right, we see you, like, gravel sort of spin and go down. Uh, Jacob, Mithri kind of turns to you. She's sort of crouching, so, like, firearm on her knee, and she says, you know, it's later. So, song now? I, I, I didn't bring my guitar to the rescue. <sighs> Amateur hour. Instead, I brought a stick and stole a gun. <laughs> is a gun an instrument in a manner of speaking but like uh, only in the worst manner of speaking she sort of like looks at your, your gun and she nods and she's like you know we might make a soldier out of you yeah. hmm. nah soldiers work for people who are always fighting for the wrong reasons I prefer just to stick up for my town. Shall we, uh... I know we went through a bunch. Of, uh, it's a little on the later side, but uh, does now seem like a good time to cut to a break? Mm-hmm. Yeah, now was a great time for a break. All right. Yeah. Oh, cool. Sounds See you in a minute. Good. Sounds good. All right. We'll do, uh, break back time. in five minutes. Sounds good. Sounds cool. good.
And I don't see video for you, Mac, but oh, well, we're, we're back in the stream now, I should mention. Yeah. We're back. Sort of. Mostly my back. My internet connection is... My internet connection is not great. Here. Oh, yay, there you are. Yay! Wow, that yeah, was... Yeah, typically all I have to do is just restart the camera. No, that was pretty exciting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you have successfully completed your venture of finding and getting Captain Mithri back to safety. Yay! That was a little messier <laughs> than our, our last <laughs> jobs. Yeah. Uh, Good to yeah. be back, though. Good to be back. Mm -hmm. And you, like, saved extra people from yeah. corporate brainwashing and or canceling. <clears throat> So. Yeah, they seemed like they were on the cancel list, given the name of the room <laughs> they were in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with like yeah. five bonus rescues. Six All bonus right. rescues if you count Jameson. All right, yeah, Jameson mm -hmm. counts totally. Yeah. Um. So what we're gonna do mechanically is move into the town phase. Um. So we'll go through some of the the fallout of everything that happened and then go into more like the community building and the downtime um so it's only the second time we've gone through it so we'll kind of go through it step by step uh the first part is the discord and so the first thing we're going to do is talk about tension in the community and grudges based on what happened uh so um your tension tension grows in the town depending on how much you rebelled against the status quo so how much you sort of shook up how things were will contribute to tension because everyone gets uncomfortable as things get uh out of place a bit um so i'll read some words and you let me know when this sounds like uh you appease people with you appeased to the people with power. Everything stayed quiet and calm. <laughs> <laughs> we, we should just pick that one to be spiteful. <laughs> <laughs> you pushed back against the status quo. There was conflict, but it stayed contained. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you openly okay, what's, it. What's the furthest opposite from the first one? Because I think it's that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You openly attacked or defied factions and people with power. Your revolt was loud. Or you tried to overthrow a significant power or shatter the status quo. The I don't impact think is we made far it. reaching. We didn't quite yeah. get there. Yeah, I think we made it there. most of the way. That second to the last one, mm. I think, is. Yeah. I think All right. Yeah. All right. You revolutionaries, you. Uh, we hmm. punked a little bit. <laughs> we did some pumpkin. So that starts you at four tension. And now there's a couple more things that can increase it. Um, plus one, if your venture went against the interests of a high profile or well-connected person or faction. That would be a yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I can't think of any way I could possibly wiggle out of that one. <laughs> it's completely <laughs> true. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm guilty. <laughs> Yeah, I think they're like the second highest faction level that you can have in town. Um, now, is any if any pl uh, player character's defiance clock is above two. So if you remember, each kind of column you fill is one. So if you have two of those arms filled, that would be uh, up to defiance two or more. So we need to have four or more check boxes no. filled. I'm not. I'm not there yet. Where Why? are we at? Filled it last session, and then I took ah. a new ability and emptied it. Uh, and I think Jacob had taken a new ability last time that he played, so you guys are not defiant enough right now to get more. So you're at five yeah. tension, so I'm going to add that to your town sheet, and I'll go ahead and pop that for everyone to see. Three, four, five. All right. Um... Good thing you spent some time reducing tension last time because it uh, kept you from maxing out. Yeah. Mm. All right. So 
Um, now the question is if the venture caused any new grudges. Um, so there's a couple things that can do this. If you failed the venture, you would mark a grudge with the person who had asked for help. You mm. succeeded. Um, okay. Bad feelings. If you harmed, exploited, or manipulated a contact. I don't think yeah. we did. Not a contact, so. no. Uh, not, not a contact. Yeah, not your town contacts. So you're good on that. Um, troublemakers. If you increase the town's tension by four or more, yeah. mark a grudge with a contact who blames them. So Ooh, if we bring up the town contacts. You can see uh, who might blame you for... Uh, Basically, all the new tension in town. Mm. The one that sticks out to me is the caretaker Ash, because we're making waves and. Uh, yeah. It also involved, you know, Luna, who Ash already has kind of a grudge against. It is more likely to blame for yeah. causing problems. We also yeah. added seven new citizens, so London might be a little uh, put out mm. by that as well. Yeah, I was, I was thinking London, probably would. Oh, the boss. Yep, that that's a good one, too. Mm -hmm. Making waves, uh, making his job a lot worse. Yeah. More, just more complicated. Yep. Causing trouble. Yeah, because yeah, uh, he's kind of in charge of keeping the town going and calm and good. So that makes mm -hmm. sense. So you got to London's got a grudge against you. Yeah, great. All right. So now we're going to look at conformity. Um, so the team has an ideal, um, and so if you did the two things I'll read, we'll increase your conformity, and if you revolted, we'll take it down. Um, so conform when your team hurts or exploits a vulnerable person. So thinking about the entire intervention, did you hurt or exploit anyone who was vulnerable? Yes. <laughs> How? Wait, 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 no. Who? Uh, what's his name? Noel, that we got the information from? We also freed him from the... Uh, he... Like... I don't... I don't think he was vulnerable when we hurt him. He became I vulnerable think he was at our after mercy. we hurt him. Yeah, we... That's the only one that I think might fit, but it sounds like it fits mm. perfectly to me, but uh, I'm, I'm willing to be outvoted. That's fine with me. I just don't know. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really I mean, know. we did what we had to do, like, and we ultimately helped him, maybe. But, yeah, we ultimately helped him, and I think that's uh, I think that's the crux of it right And there. he had to do the right mm -hmm. thing in order to help the person that he, you know, put in a bad spot. So mm -hmm. there's kind of an element we, of justice to it, I guess. That's right. We nudged him into being a better person. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, not entirely our fault that it cost him. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, did you dismiss, disrespect, or show hostility towards someone with a different status or soul type? Undoubtedly. Yes. All right, I'm marking one, but now I can see if you resisted. Did you put yourself at risk to help a vulnerable person? Yes. Yes, uh, yeah, very definitely. much so. <laughs> All right, so that balances out. What this does, because uh, this is kind of a GM thing behind the scenes, is every time you conform, um, I advance one of the factions ongoing goals. So uh, that will probably come into our last episode um, of the season. So you cleared it so you don't have permanent conformity, but I'm going to pick one of the factions and advance their, their goal um, because kind of conforming sort of contributes to the, their agenda. All right, so do, 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 do. Um, normally we do an entanglement, but what we kind of talked about off camera before we started is last episode was an entanglement. Uh, we kind of flash back to a different time period to do it, but it makes sense to count it because you all uh, played it out and sort of had the complications from it and all of that. Um, Mac, would you be able to like maybe very briefly uh, summarize what the entanglement was or what happened? 
Um. I'm sorry, this entanglement that we just did? Uh, or... The one from with Charity last episode? Yes. Um, so basically, uh, I have to think a little bit for that. Um, we essentially were um, running away from like the military um, because Charity stole a ship that she had to deliver to the um, I think it was the 1050s. I should mm -hmm. jump in and say this was a flashback to yes, like a while ago, like back yes. around the time yeah, when Scott a... was new in town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, this was from a long time ago. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's like a very basic summary of it. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep. So that was kind of the entanglement we rolled for it and everything off screen that we played out last time. So your connection with Charity got you pulled into running away from the military and dealing with the 1050s a little bit. Yeah, and her, um, Charity's father was in a bad spot. The 1050s were sort of leaning on him to provide something bad for them. So that's what the whole thing that yes. uh, Charity was. Yeah. We had to make a choice of whether to help her help the 1050s, which I guess might have been why we end up getting pulled into uh, framing people later. Um, <laughs> or it had something to do with it, maybe. But, um, or, uh, or do the right thing, maybe? Uh, we did the right thing by helping our friend Charity, but uh, maybe the wrong thing by helping out the 1050s in the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so now we move on to the community stage. Um, and so you get two rewards for finishing your venture. First, you're going to we mark a new bond with the contact you helped. So you now have two bonds with Bales, the town gossip. Um, and that's not the right tab. Then you also gain favors. Um, the bigger the favor you did, the more you get for it. Um, so if it was a... Let me see. Um, so a standard task, so a significant benefit to the contact or a small benefit to the whole town, a big task, serious benefit to the contact or a modest benefit to the whole town, uh, or major task, life-changing benefit. I sort of feel like it might be a big one since you helped the other town people escape. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, too. I mean, not to toot our own horns or nothing. <laughs> All right, so that gets you eight favors um, to split between the three of you. And... That will be, you can mark them on your character sheet near the top left. So we each get three, and one of us gets two, then? Mm -hmm. hmm. All right. I'll, I'll take two. Okay. I was going to volunteer, but you interrupt, interrupted me and did it first. Yeah, so. I was also <laughs> going to volunteer. <laughs> I was faster. <laughs> yep. All right. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> now I get let. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, say I would say we could roll for it, but uh, I think that automatically puts me at a disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not letting you do that with your dice karma today. Sorry. No. <laughs> Just trying uh, to look out for you. So now we look at community building, um, and what this is is you can, if you want, use bonds. Um, and they form a dice pool. Um, and sort of the first thing you can do is if you use the bonds, um, you roll to see if the contact reveals something sort of about themselves. Um, and there's kind of two things to this. Once you know both of their their traits, once you uncover both of the, the two traits they have, you get their special power, 
just kind of permanently. Mm. Um, but the other thing is once you know one of their traits, anytime you want them to help you out using that trait, you can just roll your bonds as a dice pool and they'll just help you in that way. So oh, their nice. traits are kind of tied to like specialized like personality traits or knowledge or connections that you'll be able to sort of just anytime say like, hey, we know this person, they're good at this. Let's say they help us out with this thing. Um, we have two dots with the uh, the town gossip. The gossip. It might might be worth mm -hmm. risking. Those. And that's a cool power. The thing is, if we roll like crap, then we lose some of the bonds and don't get anything for it. So, but I think having yeah. two dice gives us a pretty good chance as long as uh, Mac isn't rolling them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it'll be our first contact roll. So one thing I'll say is not that I think anyone has a lot of stress, but you can resist losing bonds um, like you would resist a negative effect on a roll. I've got a little bit of stress left. All right. So what would happen if you do decide to roll it um, is you'd roll the two bonds you have as your dice pool. One to three, um, what you want doesn't happen, and you lose a bond by one. Somehow, like in this example, maybe you're asking Bales about herself, and she gets offended and doesn't want to talk to you as much. Um, four to five, you learn what you want, but it sort of strains the relationship, and you lose a bond. Six, you get what you want, and there's no change in the relationship. Um, and you can always resist losing a bond. Uh, do you guys, is it okay if I try? Yeah, let's do it. All right, what do I roll? I think two dice, because we have two bonds. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Come on, boxcars. How do I do that? Where do I, where do I go? Oh, uh, if you want to click on any skill, you have like two dots in. It'll give you the right dice. Oh, there we go. Uh... Look at that. Ooh, look at that. So, you learn about bales nice. and you don't lose the relationship at all. So, let me yeah. pull up. Um,. So I imagine part of it is maybe you're kind of back visiting her um, and uh, it's after she knows that uh, Captain Mithri is uh, okay. Um, and maybe even at the uh, the Moonshiner's barbecue as she invited herself to. <laughs> um, and as you are so like at the barbecue, you actually notice that all the Moonshiners are really happy to see her. Um, and some of the military stop by and are like really friendly with her. And you learn that Bales is welcome in all of the wrong places. Oh. Mm. That's why she knows so much good dirt on everybody. Mm hmm So in the future, if you ever want uh, her help being welcome in the wrong places, you can just kind of ask uh, for her help with that. Oh, perfect. That's exactly the kind of contact we need. Now you get two community actions. If you want, you can make another contact roll either with her or with someone else, or you can call it good at this point. I am not prepared to push my luck with dice. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good today. Feeling all right about it. Do we have anybody else at two? Mm -hmm. I, I don't have the town mm -hmm. sheet open at the moment. No, we don't. No, don't. everyone else is a one. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'd like to risk anybody who's just at a one. I think two is about where I want to consider the risk. Uh, what do you yeah, think? That, that's where I'm comfortable make? rolling dice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on then. All right. So now we move into downtime. Um, and I will just in case it's helpful, post the link to the specific downtime rules. Um, so downtime, you can take um, two actions by default. You can always spend one favor for uh, an additional action during downtime. Um, and you can do the various things, trying to ease tension, uh, work on a long-term project, do an odd job for favors, pursue your rebellion to reduce stress, try and recover from conditions. Um, Quick question though: Is there something special for those of us who maxed out our stress? I think both Luna and Scout did. Yes. Yep. Yep. 
Um, let me... Does that take an action to resolve, or is that... Um, is so that it happens? is going to be... Um, I'm trying to remember, have either of you maxed out before, or is this your first time? First time. Yeah, first time. All right. Um, let me pull that up real quick. Why can't I find that? There we go. Okay. Um, so, um, when you're maxed out, you're full until the next town phase. Um, and then during downtime, um, you spend uh, one of your actions um, recovering and you mark what's called a sacrifice so what this means is is you got so stressed out um that you, when you were recovering from it it had kind of a, a significant effect on you and because of that you form a new belief so examples it gives is maybe you break off a significant relationship maybe you lose time because you spent become sick maybe you spend a lot of money on distractions and based on that, you sort of form a belief um, based on the sacrifice. And so this can be like a negative belief or a positive. So, for example, maybe you uh, get in an argument with a friend because you're so stressed. And your belief could be, I shouldn't be around people because I can't, you know, be friendly or whatever. Or your belief could be... Um, I should always put other people first. So it's kind of this strong belief based on like how the stress has affected you. So I think like the first question to think about is sort of as your characters, um, if you are like completely overwhelmed by stress and you need to get rid of it, like what would be the way your character would sort of deal with that much stress and what would they sort of like sacrifice or lose trying to get rid of the stress? Do you want to go first, uh, Mac, or do you want me to? I don't. <laughs> if you would like to go first, that would be uh, wonderful. All right, yeah, Scout, basically, as soon as you guys get back to town or drop him off, like, uh, where he's got his bike parked, he just, like, without a word, it just goes over to his bike and puts his helmet on and rides off. And he leaves the town. He goes off driving, mm -hmm. riding out on the desolate roads from one town to another, back in the you know, kind of the places he was before he came to this town. And he starts to wonder if if he belongs here, if he'd really belong anywhere. And like these people wanted to belong together and they were mind controlled and you know, they're they're being turned into fertilizer and civilization in towns is just it, dangerous. Where is this gonna lead? And he spends some time considering like maybe he won't even go back to his friends. Uh, mm. But he does. He comes back around and decides that you know the. Uh, he doesn't want to stay out in the wild. He gets lonely. Uh, he's like goes out camps a few times. Maybe there's some spooky encounters. Nothing quite eats him necessarily. Uh, maybe there's some like weird critter that sort of moves up and locks eyes with him at the edge of the campfire, and then you know backs away. Sort of notices the wild in him, and he just. He doesn't have a society out here, and he misses his friends, so he, he comes back to town a little worse for wear, uh, but uh, more or less uh, more resolved to kind of stand with his friends. But um, he's got the belief that um, the more civilized something is, the more dangerous it is. Mm. Like the red oh. tape and the paperwork and all that, the more you go towards order and society of civilization going that way uh it, it gets bad so All right. it's more about the people not about this these structures of civilization so he's got a distrust for that now cool so yeah. what you'll do is you'll clear your stress and mark a sacrifice um and then write down your belief and going forward um and at the end of session, when we review XP, if you embody your belief, you can earn XP for it. 
Yeah, I think when writing it down, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll make it. Uh, no, people are more important than uh, structure or organization. I don't know. No, I don't know what the right term is, but. Mm -hmm. Mac, do you have an idea, or do you want us to go to Jacob's downtime action first? Uh, I'm reading through uh, what it says about the downtime phase on the site to try to get an idea, uh, so Jacob can go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> no problem. So I'm trying to figure out uh, how do I, now that I'm hurt, how do I get not hurt? Yeah, so you can take the recover action. Um, and what that is, is you reach out to your community to sort of regain your sense of balance and health. Um, and so you can build a dice pool for each favor you spend up to four and then roll to see how well you recover. All right. So. I have four favors. How do I, do I just spend them? Um, so you can spend anywhere from one to have one die up to four to have four dice. So kind of um, how certain you want to be that you'll roll well. If you get a one to three, um, you end up feeling more stressed and obligated and you get a new condition. If you get a four or five, you clear a condition. And if you get a six, you clear all conditions you have. All right, but this doesn't do anything for my stress, right? No, that'll be a different uh, one. Okay, so I'm gonna try that first. Uh, I think three, is that too many? I think it's a good number statistically. All right, so where do I roll three at? I don't know how to do that. Um, you can just actually write slash r space 3d6 in the chat, and it will do it for you. Wait, slash r what? 3d6. The other option is to pick something with fewer than three dots, and it asks you how many extra bonus dice you want to add to it. Yeah, uh, to I might go that way. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. Six. You have no conditions now. Woohoo. All right. And then did you also want to work on stress? I you probably saying? should. <clears throat> All right. So to get rid of stress, you pursue your rebellion. Um, mm -hmm. So whatever your character's rebellion is, you kind of describe how you pursue it. And then you'll roll your lowest attribute and get recover six stress minus... Whatever uh, I roll. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, what I'm going to do then uh, to uh, engage my rebellion uh, is I'm going to send a gift basket full of jerky to the corporation that we just broke our friends out of. Hmm. Assorted jerkies, different animals. You know, maybe some bee jerky, <laughs> some deer jerky. Both bee jerky. Non Giant meat <laughs> bee jerky. <laughs> nice. It'll all be individually wrapped and, and labeled. I'll spend a lot of time on it. Nice ribbon. I like it. Very compassionate. Sorry about your I'm... door. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just seeing the recipient of this jerky looking at the package and going, bee jerky? Huh. Must be a typo. Now, I, uh, <laughs> and I spend a lot of time on the lettering of the letter. Like, it's handwritten using, you know, some nice homemade ink. Good calligraphy. <laughs> I mean, for an uneducated man. Wait, they all say bee jerky. <laughs> no, no, no. I just smudged the F on that one. It says beef. <laughs> all right. All right. 
So yeah, you... that's my big plan. Is I'm sending gift baskets to anybody we have wronged recently. It's so sweet. Um, so if you just click on Cortex, it should do the roll for you. On Cortex? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Nothing happened. Aha. Uh -huh. Did it have a pop-up? There you go. Five. All right. So you clear five stress. All right. That's how many I had, so good. Perfect. Hmm. How do I... How do I get rid of that last one? There we go. Uh, you got it. Okay. Yeah, it's to the left a little bit. It's a little fiddly. Yeah. Um. Scout, do you know what you want to do for your other downtime action? Um. Yeah, uh, I guess Scout, uh, when he gets back, he still doesn't just interface with the community yet. He, he sort of stays, like, picks one of his... Uh, sort of safe house sort of a uh, squats that he uh, stays at it's kind of at the edge of things not not his main place and um he's gonna start uh i guess trying to tinker with uh this uh commune that's got karen attached to it see if he can get uh karen detached and some more diagnostic systems uh see if i can figure out more of uh what makes this thing tick and whether or not i can trust it so i will continue nice. with the long-term project of understand karen I like it. All right. Um, I'd like to use Fabricate if I can, because it has the best chance. I've got various doohickeys I can use to maybe uh, fabricate a better interface device to decode the data that's coming off it or something. Yeah, I think that makes sense. All right, uh, here goes. Five. Okay, not nice. bad. All right. How far Fabricate. along am I on that? Um, well, now you will be all but two done. I'll fill in these. And I think I'd like to spend a favor then to, to call in uh, uh, some, some help from some of the... the I don't know, some... Uh, what would be... Do I pick a contact for this or... Um, I'm going to call Chuck the Freeloader over. He's uh, He was the first person, like <laughs> one of the first people I met in town and he like helped me from not dying in a flash flood. So I'm going to have him like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to tell him to like kind of unload, talk about what's been going on lately. Just all the stories, uh, like everything we've gone through, except for the, you know, uh, uh, the dead bodies. We helped uh, uh, frame somebody else. And I'll leave that part out of it. Um, and the story about charity and that's old news, but um, I just kind of asked for his advice and kind of, like, see if he can think of anything to try. Um, so I'll spend a favor and I'll do another ongoing um, long-term project to see if I can see if I can yeah. understand more about Karen. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to um, this is important enough I think I'm going to spend a stress to get an extra die on, on it as well. I, I want to see if I can't uh, max this out. Sounds good. Oh. Um, you know what I think it is is a uh, Chuck in town freeloader um likes to crash at Ash's place. Uh, they uh, seem to let him crash there a lot. Uh, he is actually very clean and a little bit organized and kind of tidy, and so Ash likes having them around. Um, and so he's picked up some different things about AI and heard some things just from conversations with uh. At, between Ash and some people coming and going. Um, and I think he's probably like, uh, have you tried like the, the new owner reset sequence um, to pair her to, to you? Um, and so you are able to, you kind of filled up getting to know Karen. Um, and so Basically, at this point, you can communicate with her um, fully. You can see that she's a, a pretty advanced AI. She has some uh, advanced personality protocols uh, embedded in it. And you're now able to sort of communicate freely with her. Cool. 
All right. Uh, so I know we're getting near the end of time. Um, Mac, if you want, we could save your belief for next time if you want to think about it some. Yeah, I think that's a good idea because absolutely nothing is coming to my mind right now. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. fair. Do you know what you want uh, your other downtime action to be? I, I don't. Um, get get rid of some of that stress. Of different things. Yeah, I know that I definitely need to reduce stress. Well, no, her stress um, is gonna their their stress is gonna be at zero after, after taking in a new belief. Mm -hmm. Once oh, you do the okay, sacrifice. Okay. If you can't think of anything else to do, reducing town town tension would be helpful. Mm -hmm. But um. Yeah. Uh, there's lots I, of other potential useful actions though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would like to reduce tension. All um, right. I'm kind of torn between that, though, and um, clearing my conditions, but I think that uh, oh yeah, reducing tension is a little more, like, a little more of a pressing need. At the same time, take care of you. Yeah. Um, hmm. I said that only to justify the fact that I just took care of me this time. Yeah. <laughs> on a potential um, counterpoint clearing conditions does involve rolling dice and if the result is bad you get another that's condition true, and I, don't, I don't think I want to roll any dice tonight because it's gone so badly but you can spend uh, like four favors and roll four dice so you know yeah but that seems like an awful lot of ones yeah to go but through. then I'd be spending four favors I think it's also having conditions uh, helps you get experience points faster also, yeah. we have one more episode to spend right. it. That's, mm. yeah, that's true. Um, Let's see how this game works. Mm. I have a question <laughs> while you're considering, uh, Cass. Can mm. we spend multiple favors to get more downtime actions, or is it just one more you can get total? Yep, you can spend uh, basically a favor for a downtime action. So as long as you have favors, okay. you can keep doing things. Nice. Um, oh, all right. Well, let me see. Um, well, do we want to see what happens when the town tension, uh, fills up? You know, that's not a terrible thing necessarily. I mean, I mean it is a terrible I wanna thing. I want to see, I want to see everything. Because I, I kind of want to see what happens with that. I think that could be really narratively interesting. Well, Last maybe, episode. But maybe we get there at the end of next episode and just uh, see mm -hmm. what happens next season with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of storytelling potential all the way around. Yeah, yeah I know. Do, uh, do what your yeah, heart I, tells you. I think <laughs> my heart tells me that I want to see what happens when the tension fills up. My heart tells so. me it will go on in chip tuning. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so yeah, in that case then, I think I'm going to uh, try to clear my conditions by recovering. Um, So, you reach out to the community to regain your sense of balance. Build a dice pool based on the number of favors you spend from 0 to 4. And roll. Look at the highest result. Um. Hmm. I mean, with your luck, you might want the most possible. Yeah. Well, I have... I have five favors right now. How many conditions do you have? Is it so, two or more? I have two. I have two. So if you get a six, you'll clear all of them. <clears throat> okay. Um. The dice pool. Okay. So how? Uh. Okay. Remind me how to. Well, no, I know how to roll that. Okay. You got a six. All right. Sweet. Yay. All right. So you Very managed cool. to recover completely. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I clear both of my conditions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's neat. Oh, I have got to get going. Yeah, yeah, we're a little bit over. Uh, we'll, I think I we'll, we'll wrap up a little bit of the last stuff at the beginning next time. Uh, some of the experience mm -hmm. points we get. Um, any yeah. other lingering downtime actions. I would like to do the inventor thing. Maybe I'll communicate with you a little bit about that in between casts. And we can just summarize mm -hmm. it when we come back. So mm -hmm. thanks so much for playing with us and running the game, Cass. And yeah. I had so much fun with all of you today. And uh, thanks to those of you who joined you. us. Uh, thanks so much. I also, it's good to see everybody. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. been forever, it seems like. It's good to see mm -hmm. you guys, too. I know. Now, I know uh, I, I normally ask the, the audience for, for a raid suggestion, but Oz said that he is actually doing a Blades in the Dark stream with Bubbernaut and some mm -hmm. other people. So I think Ooh. we'll go oh, and raid the Bubbernaut's channel. So awesome. right on. give me a moment to pull that up here. And we'll go uh, say hello to Oz and uh, the Bubber Knot and nice. uh, hey. catch some more uh, Forged in the Dark if you're hungry mm -hmm. for it. Awesome. Right I, I wish sure I could watch that, underway. but I have to sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same. <laughs> it's much earlier for me, so I can I can do whatever I, know. I want. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, somewhat earlier somebody. for me as well. So. Mm. Yeah. All right. All right, raid initiated. Oh, somebody just raided us. Oh, hey, well, thanks for raiding well, us. We are actually you. in the process of raiding raid someone else. Somebody else. But, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, thank we you appreciate to Manapot Studios. It. Yeah, we had a great time tonight, but we're we're gonna go raid the Bubber Knot now. So so join mm -hmm. us. We'll we'll carry you along with us uh, for mm -hmm. some Blades in the Dark with the Bubber Knot. Again, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. Good night. See you next time. Bye, guys.